Hey, everyone, brand new podcast. And it's fitting that we have Noah Cap on today and Carnival Eats because I will be at ballparks and arenas and amphitheaters all summer with the Fully Loaded Tour. FullyLoadedFestival.com. Get your tickets. We were in June 16th, South Bend, Louisville, Kentucky, Dayton, Rochester. Then June 23rd, that weekend, we'll be in Greenville, Bristol, Lawrenceville, and Brandon, Mississippi. Um, Dave Vitell, uh, Shane Gillis, Mark Normand, Nikki Glazer, Taylor Tomlinson, Joey Diaz, Fortune Feimster, Sal Volcano. We just added a uh, Trailer Park Tammy. That, no, I'll tell you later. I, that there was a story that they told me about her mm-hmm. that the second they told me i go book her please book her <laughs> please bo- she yes she performed with whitney i'm not gonna say i don't want to get too much into it and i guess i guess the venue was like uh we were not cool with that act and i was like then i am very cool with that act take that act on the road with me uh today's podcast is a great one it is with a, a guy that we have been we have been talking about for what do you what like three years now four years yeah you first brought him up on open tabs i first brought him up on open tabs he has an amazing show called carnival eats it's one of my favorite shows it is my guilty pleasure i love it and i love his hosting that's why i love it so much is he's such a great host but now he's become a good friend and uh we keep in touch we text all the time he's come to my shows he's been to my house he is an immaculate dresser he just had a baby we talk about that. He's got a beautiful wife. He's got, man, the guy's living large. He is, and we we talk. We talk about uh, my experience over Travel Channel. We talk about our bosses over at Travel Channel. Celebrate them. Uh, shout out to, I won't say anyone's name. You, li- you got to listen to the podcast here if you get called out. We talk about everything. It's a great podcast. It's a great hang. You've heard me talk about this guy forever. Just listen to the podcast. Have a good time. Have a great day. Have a great fucking day. Have a great fucking day. Don't eat uh, three hours before you go to bed and you'll have a great night's sleep. Ladies and gentlemen, especially fitting that this is, we're talking about Carnival Eats, that will give you indigestion. Yeah, definitely. My buddy, host of Carnival Eats, uh, fucking megastar, Noah Cap. Are you, thanks, man. Are you pacing yourself? No, 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 no. I'm not pacing myself. I don't, you know, I, I was actually thinking about that today. I have a hard time with moderation in every respect. Yeah. So if you offer me something, I take it. And, right. it, and, it, and it almost doesn't matter. Like, I was doing non-dairy, and then someone had a, made a plate of cheese, and I just was like, I was like, yeah, of course. I felt rude not taking it. But that goes across the board. I mean, it, it definitely, like, this morning, I got an offer to go. There's one of my, one of my, I've, like, there's a handful of radio shows that I would will still wake up early for. Right. One of my buddies, Woody, has a great show here in Los Angeles. Yeah. And they were like, and he just called me the other day, and he's like, "You want to come in at five a.m.?" And I was like, "Yeah." I didn't even think about it, and and then and then I looked at my day, like, "Do you want to?" I I, I I was wanting to document today because it's so aggressive. It's yeah. five a.m. radio podcast with you, another podcast trainer, uh, fly out tonight at eight, land in New York at seven podcast at 12 podcast at one podcast at three podcast at five right and then shows tomorrow night and i remember like when i was filming good witch on hallmark and carnival leads and a bunch of things at the same time in those nights where you'd wrap on set and go straight to an airport and take a red eye and land and go to a set and i and i used to think about in those moments about like balance and all that but i people who have grown up in this industry yeah. And if you've like had to pound the pavement and it didn't just happen for you one day, like instantly. Well, that's okay. Those are there the ones, is a yeah. part of you that learns that that gets ingrained early in your career where you're just like, you gotta work hard, you gotta take any gig that you get. Even yeah. when you're busy, there's that feeling of like, I don't want to say no because I don't know what tomorrow holds. So you kind of just keep saying yes to keep this like fire burning, but the fire gets fucking bigger. The and then you gotta throw it. more wood on you know what i mean like it's especially when you're when you're when your brand is content meaning like like my brand is uh is talking yeah and so i have to have things to talk about and now we're getting to a place with our family is there certain things that i can't talk about that would make great content would make riveting content and then sometimes content isn't funny but it's insightful and then i'm like am i that guy like i don't want to be yeah the guy that we're like 
I look at YouTubers, like the big ones, and I'm just like, Mr. Beast. I don't think I could handle that pressure of every day. Like, I come up with content every day, but it's like mindless just me doing my thing. Yeah, it's but not it's, like I have to worry about yeah. if a sponsor is going to like it or if my million point whatever people are going to, you know, it's like the, the pressure of having to come up with new stuff every day has to be intense. Well, man. I think the, there's pressure to it, but there's also a obsessive compulsiveness to it right. that I think that leans, I lean in too well. Like yeah. I enjoy, um, I genuinely enjoy think, thinking. Like I'll, I'll give you a perfect like no, but like uh, today I went. Um, you were thinking. Uh, I was thinking about you. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh, I have these new shoes that I haven't worn yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear them because, because Noah's a shoe guy. Like he'll right. get a kick out of them, and he'll be like, oh, where did you get? And like that'll be a big conversation. Right. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, cool. And then I, I was like, uh, and then all, like all the, the but that I don't that that is who I am. Right. That's so, a good thing. And I did the same thing with you this morning. I woke up and I was like, you know what? I, I know I'm out of town, whatever. I don't want to show up with some cheesy like souvenir thing. Like, oh, it's the popular donuts in LA yeah. right now. I was like, you know what? I'm going to order a hundred dollars in breakfast sandwiches from McDonald's <laughs> and bring them over. <laughs> but because I'm not from LA, I didn't order an hour and a half before I needed to. So I left and now there's a hundred dollars of McDonald's sandwiches sitting at my front door waiting for me to get home. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah. That's, so that's it's a thought me. that counts, man. Dude, I am so happy to have you on this podcast. You are you're like one of my my my. I, you, I, I've told you this before because we've hung out. Yeah. Uh, in Toronto. In Toronto, it, yeah. it, your hometown. But uh, you're one of my favorite finds. Like for me, like the things I like, and your hosting is so. You, you're you're, carnival. It's was like a staple. You know, it's so I funny. Know, dude. I said to my daughters, I I I went and got. Uh, did radio and then I got coffees for my daughters to before school. Yeah. And I, they said, well, are I going to see you tonight? And I was like, I don't know. And they're like, are you done? And I was like, oh, no. I said, my buddy Noah's coming over. And they're like, podcast? I was like, yeah. Who? They're like, who's he? I go, do you remember Carnival East? And they're like, are you being fucking serious, Dad? You were hardcore. I might have been the biggest fan. Uh, for real. And it was so exciting because you were, like, starting to kind of blow up at that time. You know what well, I mean? Like I had been, in all fairness, Carnival East started in 2014. Yeah, you know better than I do. I, I, yeah. I know what I know what was happening in my life. At that I remember time. the season one rap party, looking in the bushes and seeing you like watching <laughs> us. I was like, "What the fuck is that guy doing?" I know where I was at that point in my life. So like, I had, I had been let go from Travel Channel right. at the time and was having to figure out what I was going to do with me, and I was podcasting a lot, but I started to realize that. I couldn't watch I couldn't watch uh I couldn't watch a lot of things on Travel Channel when I worked on Travel Channel. I couldn't watch a lot of things on food. Right. Because I was so it was so inside baseball to me that like I, I, I only went to Travel Channel because of Man vs. Food. I loved that show. Right. I loved that show yeah. so much. Yeah, took man. a general meeting with Sharp Entertainment and they were like and I only took the general meeting because I wanted to talk about man versus food. Right. And then I couldn't watch I couldn't watch I couldn't watch No Reservations anymore, yeah. which was like uh, an amazing show. Couldn't watch I couldn't watch Bizarre Foods. I couldn't watch the reboot of Bizarre Foods where he did it via green screen. Right. And I and and I found Carnival Eats at the same time I found I couldn't watch Guy Fieri when I was on the network. The second I was off the network, I became obsessed. Right. And I was like, I think it was like you know, it was interesting, though, because when you, like, kind of reached out the first time or posted something, you, you, you know, you, you have a show on television, you, a lot of people message you and say stuff. But every now and then somebody says something where you're like, this isn't just a compliment. This isn't just a something that they noticed. This is somebody who's got some experience, who's done this. And I remember you talking about the way that I hosted. Yeah. It wasn't just like, oh, this guy's funny, makes a bunch of jokes. Yeah. It was like talking about technical stuff about the way you know i'd bring my hands up in a frame early and to establish like you know whatever little things where i was like i appreciated that you were kind of picking up on the technical side of things i was i loved the little things uh i i it's so funny like the the uh the things that snag me yeah especially with, I, I can't talk about comedy specials because i can break down comedy specials 
and tell you what I don't like in a matter of seconds. I can do it all. But with right. hosting, I was like, there was a there was a guy, I won't say his name. I'll say it, but you can edit him out. He never looked to the person. He never talked to the person. Right. So inadvertently, the person he was talking to never looked at him. Right. Because you'd see that. It's a, it's 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 like hosting 101. There's a lot of hosting 101s, but like you don't you don't talk to the camera as a host and go, "I'm here with this guy." And cuz then that guy's like, "Who the fuck am I talking to?" So then that guy looks at the camera. So now you have two guys looking at the camera right. who are talking to each other and it's so distracting. It and and then the other one, and I I want to tell this to Sebastian Maniscalco every fucking day and you can leave his name in. <laughs> it, it's it's uh anyone who does an Instagram read who goes, uh, "Hey guys," and they're going to walk the number one thing with hosting is start walking first, then talk. Thank you. You, you do not want your fucking line to be like, <laughs> I'll be at the, you know, like yeah. you, it's, it's a host, but your, your hosting was flawless and you're, you would make people comfortable and you would make, and, and you always, you had such a great way to button things. You would button things Thanks, in brother. such a concise way where you knew the scene was over. You know, I didn't learn that in stand up until right before Secret time. I remember getting an applause break in the middle of my act, and I said to this kid, "Why do you think they clapped?" And he goes, well, "I know I clapped because I, th- I knew you were done." Right. And I was like, "What?" And he was like, "This story was over. I knew we were going to start another one." I was like, "That was a really good story." And I went, "Do you know how many times I fucking hosted?" And I would just, I'd leave a thought here, and yeah. then people would be like, "And are we talking about something else now?" Right, 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 right. But it was so fucking. It is weird. It's funny. I I hosted The Bachelor Canada and The Bachelorette Canada. I was Canada's Chris Harrison for a minute. Ugh, I, he's had a piss second <laughs> if we're cutting stuff out uh and uh, i remember what and just like a few weeks ago watching the american one that's on right now and it's so funny because there's that part of you that's lived behind the scenes and you understand all the producers hands and the yeah. manipulation but at the same time that part of you that just wants to like give in and, and and get into it and i still find myself even with shows that i know the behind the scenes stuff being like what like he picked her yeah. the other date was so much better and it's like <laughs> dude no you know that the reason he picked her is because she's gonna cause a shitload of problems next oh. week uh but it's uh you know that's the beauty of television it's like uh, even when you get to be a part of it, I watch Food Network as a fan. I never think of myself as a personality on the network. I sit down, I knock out a guy's grocery games marathon, look at my uh, fucking watch, and I'm just like, did I just watch six episodes in a row? I can watch guys' grocery games. Guy, by the way, have you done an app? Ep- have you? I did. I yeah. did an episode. I won. I won. Uh, uh, we should judge together on that show. I, I can I tell you, I, uh, I think I'm going back in I, April. I said to said to someone one time i was like it was after i was done travel channel i was going in to do press at sirius xm and some guy was like uh this is gonna sound shitty and i don't want it to sound shitty because it's not shitty all right but when i did guys grocery grams i it was the nail in the coffin for television for me yeah because i was like i'm oh i'm never doing television again Uh, that day and and it lasted for a while i started i started again but like i remember what was it? What it was, was it? uh it was, it was it's it's the dumbest fucking thing. But it was a PA telling me to go back to my trailer. He'll tell me when I'm ready. And I was like, I'm not that fucking guy. But I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and it was like Can little you things. imagine the young version of you seeing that version of you being pissed off that somebody told you oh. when, like you know what I mean? Just like uh I always like I remember being like thinking about divas and people that whatever and just like if i ever got famous right if i ever got fortunate enough to do what i love and all that stuff i would treat everybody with respect and all that whatever you quickly learn that like there is that the that the diva or that part of whatever the industry is actually just like maintain trying to keep yourself maintained at the pace that you're going and that those extras and luxuries are the things that take those little bits and pieces out of your day that allow you to knock out a full day, get on a flight, not sleep and knock out another one. I, I went, and we all ended up in Lonely Love's trailer. Cause we like, who doesn't, yeah, I mean, that's, me, uh, that's Lonnie the end Love of every story. Tammy Pascatelli, and we were like, and there was, I think Tammy was like, Hey, did they, did, did a child just tell you to go back to your trailer? Right. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, I'm not. And I was like, let's go over to Lonnie's. No one's going to say that shit to Lonnie. You had and them fired. so, and so we went over to Lonnie's, we hung out at Lonnie's, just gossip comics gossip and then guy came over knocked on and he's like what are you guys doing and we're like we're just fucking waiting and he goes come on here yeah and then we all hung out with guy and the kid came over and he's like i'm gonna need you guys back in your and guy's like 
we're good. That, I, you know, it's, it's so funny. I said, I, I, after I did my movie, I, I my executive Which, producer, congratulations, by the man. I mean, like everybody on Instagram, I followed along the behind-the-scenes shenanigans, and uh, I'm oh, excited. I was, I, I'm excited to see it. When we did the movie, I, my executive producer, Kale, said, I can see your propensity for being difficult. <laughs> He goes, stop the whole bird cast. Dude, what <laughs> word did you just drop? Was that a triple word? Was that a scrabble yeah. triple word score? I go, what? what do you mean? He goes, oh, I could very easily see you being difficult, but you're difficult in the things that you want. Right. Like there's certain things that like, I go, it's like a free spirit. Like I don't want to fucking be told this. I could not. I know my limitations. I cannot play a, like a fucking uh, a small bit part in a movie where some kid tells me. Uh, I need you. I need you. Oh my god! Like I go, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. The it all comes my... back to this PA. It's, it's like dude, this PA well, really. There's so, there's so many times that, in it, as a young talent, and I know you know this, where you follow, you follow the loose rules to a T. Yeah, of course. And then one day, one day, inevitably, you end up saying, "Do they not? Is it? It has nothing to do with my comfort. It's, it's just a line of command of like a trickle down bully." economics of this kid's terrified right. of this guy who's terrified of this guy who's terrified of this guy who by the way doesn't know what the fuck he's doing and so then all of a sudden i'm the one sitting in full hair and makeup for 12 hours for a fucking five minute scene at the end of the day that may or may not be used in the movie right. when i could have done hair and makeup right before it like my my thing on the set was being covered in blood right i could i have i have tactile issues right and so i and so they would want to cover the bottom parts of my hands in blood, right. which is sticky, right. uh, at, at, at 6 in the morning. This is you shooting the scene where you got your first period. This is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is a powerful and, scene. And I would, I would be like, at the first day I did it, right. and I couldn't eat because my fans were covered in blood. And I realized- Somebody I, had to feed you. I sat for four hours not eating, and we went to lunch, and I still hadn't stopped my, shot my scene. And I was like, is that any- does, when do we shoot my scene? And they're like, and I remember one of the executive producers going, you, oh, you don't need to be covered in blood right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> for a guy with tactile issues right. who had been sitting with his fingers apart like this for fucking four hours in a trailer. I was like. And that guy had bloody handprints all over him a second I, later. Where did you shoot that again? Uh, Serbia. Serbia. Yeah. I was going to say, I thought it was Croatia for some reason. Uh, but Croatia is, I've, I've made fun of Croatia a bunch because one of my good friends is from Croatia, but yeah. Croatia is fucking gorgeous. I've been. Really? It is gorgeous. You've been, a, you've traveled a lot. I've is traveled that, a lot. Is it because you're Canadian? Uh, <laughs> what does that even mean? You motherfuckers travel <laughs> like you like like Johnny Appleseed. Well, you know what it is. I think it's just uh, America's uh, so proud of itself that it's yeah. kind of like, why would I go anywhere else? You know what I mean? We have it all right. We've here. got a lot here. Yeah, Canada's like, uh, you know, heck, it's freezing half the time. So what do you, you got in Canada? You've got first of all, let's be real. Hold on, let Montreal tell, City. Let me tell you something before we talk about Canada, about Croatia. Oh yeah, yeah, please. I have a crazy story. You want to hear this? Please say you got involved with Croatia Mafia. Dude, <laughs> th this is as close a story as I can get to your world of madness. We're leaving a hotel like we stayed up in the mounds at this really nice place. You and your wife? My wife and I. We get in the car. Who you met traveling? Who I met in Israel on a yeah. bus, on a tour bus when we were like kids. I mean, not like inappropriate, yeah. creepy, like we were of age. It's okay when kids fuck. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's they're <laughs> both kids and the, the, the numbers add up or don't add up, which actually adds up. Oh. <laughs> so we're in the car and we're about to make a right turn onto this one lane road that's this winding thing down out of the mountains. It's a 30 something minute to get back to the highway. And right as we're about to make the turn, these two kind of Mercedes SUVs pass and I pull in behind them and we're driving. And these people are just inching along. And it's like, you know, you're leaning, you're looking, can yeah. I get by them? There's no way to do it. And eventually we get to this part and it's now been 20 something minutes. And I'm like, come on, come on. Like, this is nuts. And Bert, I, meh, meh, I hit the horn. Like, let's go. Boom. Brake lights go on the first SUV. Boom. Brake lights hit on the second SUV. And then like a movie, all the doors open. And I'm sitting in this car with my wife looking forward and out of the car gets these guys that are, they're stand-ins for MMA fighters in like, you know what I mean? These guys yes. have no necks and they're wearing uh like 
acid wash, like Jean, like Capri stuff. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get out and turn and look and start walking to the car. And I'm sitting there like, this isn't good. <laughs> And they get closer, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 I don't want a problem here. We're in the mountains. There's nobody. Yes. They come up to the sidecar, my window's down, and they start, no, 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 whatever. They're, I can't understand what they're saying. And I'm, I mean, you wouldn't know it from looking at me, but I'm not a fighter. You're a big guy, though. You're a big guy. I'm a big guy. You'd think I'd be magrubering, just ripping yeah. necks out of people. I'm not physical presence. Uh, I've never been punched. I've never punched anyone except my friend Corey Hurwitz uh, in public school. These guys are, they're angry. And then it starts. They start trying to unlock the car door and they are reaching in and grabbing at me, trying to uh, get my seatbelt off. My wife is screaming like, stop, stop, stop. Yeah. And like, We're there's this Americans. moment. We're not Americans. <laughs> right, I'm trying to throw my <laughs> backpack with the Canadian flag. And uh, there's that moment where I was like, you're about to get the shit kicked out of you. Yeah. You're going to get beaten like bad. Curl up and just, just take it, it man. Yeah. Like, and then they like, I'm squirming. They're in the fucking thing. These cars grabbing the doors, getting jarred. I'm getting yanked. The seatbelts on. It's like, and crazy and then i see the moment where i'm like i'm about to get punched in the face like hard i can see the guy clench his fist and whatever and then that like actor improv bullshit artist part of me goes um like it was an accident accident and i try to say to the guy that i was reaching into the back seat to get something and my hand hit the horn right like i'm like accident. i was like like I, it was, I was trying to whatever and she's screaming and this whatever and I don't know what it was but they backed up and they walked away and we sat there and they got in the car and they drove and we just waited a few minutes and whatever and we got on the highway and I got onto the passing lane and there's a guy in front of me going 10, 20 under the limit and I turned to my wife and I was like we're going 40 the rest of the way I, mean, like, there's, I won't use this fucking horn again oh that needs that, that was is... a scary moment, man. Have you ever have you ever been in a moment where you were like, I'm outnumbered, I'm out, like, you know, like it's it's scary. I have one moment I'm very, very embarrassed of. Yeah. I've yeah. Had, I've I've had I've had two two moments that I were that I look and reflect and I and I, maybe three where I I uh, but for me, every moment of those, I was brave right. when I thought it wasn't gonna happen. And then when things started to happen, I cowered. And right. I cowered hard. Because we're all John Wick in our heads, right? It's like, man, when it goes down, I'll hit him with a spin kick. I, it's so funny. I'm na I'm, I will not throw the first punch. I remember saying to a bunch of, not even realizing, not even realizing what car it was, but I, I used to live next to a Starbucks, and, and it was a big parking lot yeah. uh, there. And a car was driving out of the thing, and they just threw their trash they like literally opened the door and then just threw a bag of McDonald's on the on right. the ground. I regret it so much. Instinctually, I went, "Hey, what the fuck!" But also, shout out to you for doing that. Well, but you know what I mean. On behalf of the planet, very quickly, my brain goes, "What type of animal throws their trash out of their car? What type of right ungroomed part monkey, part gorilla, bear?" And this fucking some hybrid of some scientific this experiment buzz gone wrong. Cut of a dude. Right. Like fucking full head of hair. Full head of hair means fucking genetically just fucking buzz right. cut of a dude. He stops and gets out. Hair on his arms, fucking gets out. I mean, uh, jacked arms. Right. And, I, and then I look at the car. It's a fucking, it's a jacked up like Yukon Denali. And I'm like, what was I thinking? If that comes out of a Subaru, I should say something. Right. Not out of that car. Right. And then he was like, he was like, do you have a fucking problem? But with a little bit of an accent, well, you don't know what it's, it's like. Right. Definitely where he grew up, they burn their trash in their front yard. Oh, and do you have a problem? And I was like, no, you're not supposed to throw your trash away. And he goes, you doubled down. And but You could have just well, no, been no, like, no, no, no. I said, no, I don't have a problem. But then I was like, you're not supposed to do that. And the guy was like, hey. And then I was just like, 
oh, what am I doing? What the, and then right. he just got in his car and drove away, and I picked up his trash and put it in my trash can. Disaster averted. It, but it's but I, there's. I, I'm not a I'm not a tough guy, and I and but I I look like I, I, I don't even know if I could defend myself. I mean, I have in the past. I think that's interesting that you say you've never been punched because I've been punched a lot. <laughs> you've got a punchable face though I've got a very you know what i mean face. i went through a career in my uh, a stage <laughs> of my career where i was getting shot a ton in like film and television yeah everything i'd auditioned for it was like you got the part like two in the chest one in the face and it was just like <laughs> what is happening what is it when i'm standing in front of casting agents that they're like yeah i want to shoot that face i got i walked into an audition for the shield and i didn't even start reading the lines and they went, it's him. Right. We, we got it. And right. I went, awesome. And they're like, great, we'll see you. And so I showed up and they're like, they're like, uh, DWP outfit. And I was like, okay. And meaning in my head, I'm such a fucking idiot. I was like, oh, that means I uh I translate to the blue collar people. Right. Yeah, I'm a blue collar guy or white collar, whatever, which one the, the wears a DWP. One of the outfit. collars. And then it turns out I play a husband who's jacking off watching a black dude fuck his wife. I didn't need to read. They looked at me and went, This looks like a cuck. We'll take him. And I'm, I fucking booked it. I put it on my Instagram the other day. I love this game where we throw a crazy story out and then the other one tries to match it, uh, which you just did with the punch. And now in return to your, what was your character? A uh, cuck. That, had, that was waiting for somebody to what? A sleep, cuck. Sleep I was with? watching. I was watching. Yeah. A big black dude. Fuck my wife. It turned me on. I did a film called uh, uh, How to Plan an Orgy in a Small Town. Uh -huh. And I play a character who comes to an orgy with my pregnant wife trying to get somebody to fuck the baby out of her. Because if you don't give birth, actually science, uh, having sex can induce labor. Oh, I know that. So my character is like exhausted from trying. So we go to this orgy to try to have somebody else uh, get it out of her. That was a real part, and I got it. <laughs> That's one of those where afterwards you realize for the rest of my life, it's gonna haunt me it's what's so funny now you look back at like you look back at like parts that have been played and that part haunts the actor who played the part like have you yeah. seen uh what is the what is the rosie o'donnell movie it's called my sister my sister rides the bus no i don't I actually don't like I, it's like so funny it's like in a like a movie she did early in her where career she played a person with down syndrome right but she did it in so poorly that you were like you were like and like the it was ego, a different time you it was know a what different I, time but but you cannot watch that without going like cringing and going like i i don't even want i mean it's if i even bring it up somebody will just google it and it's irrelevant if i say the name or not but uh in university i played uh a part in a, in a student film that today oh yeah was really not you know but oh. I, it was it was a different time i, you I know, wasn't it, it, I, it's hard to say that it's a different time to people because people don't People of this time don't get it. And you, and you go into that with the best intentions. It's like, I'm going to try to portray this character and, 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 and show to people the, the trials and tribulations of developmental disabilities, whatever the, yeah. the, the, the things that you've got in your head that are like the positive. Then you look back at it all these years later and just like, I mean, if I could buy every version of the tape. But you guys, but you guys in Canada are, I, I was always, I was always under the impression and correct me if I'm wrong. You guys were a, already more progressive than we were in the states i mean just listen, by the simple uh, fact that you did not have slavery i'm assuming <laughs> i will say that canada is very good at patting itself on the back and kind of doing that like yeah we are so friendly and nice we got our problems man there's a horrible racism problem throughout the middle of the, the country we we're dealing with our with our you know with our shit but uh it's uh it's a pretty good place i i will say this i saw you live for the first time in toronto and I don't, I don't know if you remember this, but there was like a palpable energy in the theater that night. And I think it was the first time you ever did this in your career. And I don't think you've ever done it since, but in a raw moment of just realness, you took your shirt off and you did the rest of the show with your shirt off. And it felt like, wow, we're seeing something raw and special here. And I know that uh, you remember that and you would never take that beautiful moment away from the whole country uh no, no. Where, yeah that was that was you know what i mean we all talk about it all 3.8 million of us often that we saw something that probably only happened once it was a one-off 
It was a one-off. And to confirm it today is special. Sunglass season is upon us. I will tell you that as a kid that grew up in Florida, I am I am a sunglass guy. And, and our friends at Shady Rays have better options than you will find anywhere. Shady Rays is an independent sunglass company that offers world-class product as, as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Halston? Dude, this is like my life exactly right now. I went to... This, He's getting married. I'm getting married, so I had an engagement photo shoot, and I wanted to get some super nice, expensive sunglasses, so I went to the mall. Great pick, great pick. I went to the All mall. the dudes in sunglasses, you in sunglasses on the beach, you and your chick, you want them to look nice. This is your wedding. Yes. Keep going. And so I bought them, and I was like, man, these are these are kind of a lot. I feel like I'm going to like break them. And so I wanted to check and see if Shady Rays had any equivalent because the last Boom. time I got Shady Rays, they were they were awesome, and I really love them. And I'm not worried about um, breaking them because they will just send me a, a new pair right away. Oh wow, are you doing the read for me? Because if you lose or break your pair, I'm not even, even on day it. one. They told us they will send you a brand new pair. Yeah. no questions asked. I've done it. Adventure before. without worry. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence. They also prevent ten meals to fight hunger. Anyway, cut to you're with these sunglasses. You're on the beach. You're with your chick, and what does she say? She goes, are you wearing the expensive ones? And I'm like, no, these are actually the Shady Rays. She's like, I, I literally can't even tell a difference. Dude, do you, listen, Shady Rays offers a great pair of sunglasses. And if you're like me and you run through sunglasses like crazy, this is your option. I have probably eight pairs of Shady Rays that I kind of interchange because I scratch them. I, I break them. I lose them. I got some on the bus. I got some at home. I'm telling you, if you don't love them, exchange for a new pair and return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. Their team always has your back. Halston loves his Shady Rays. I love my Shady Rays. And better yet, Halston's chick loves his Shady Rays. That's right. <laughs> Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use the code BERT for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Fuck. You've got to get the polarized ones. I'm going to read that again because this is a great deal. For our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use the code BERT for 50% off two-plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Holy mother of pearl. Before I got in this chair to do this podcast read, I was dreaming about a bathroom at a bar once. I know, but listen. I was looking at the bathroom art, and I was thinking, and don't laugh, okay? I know I was thinking, amid all this bad smell, this bathroom's a real masterpiece. I asked the New York City bar owner, I went up to him, and I said, who the hell painted it? And he told me, and I shit you not, he told me the original was worth millions. No fucking shit. And I told the owner, yeah, I need this dude to tag my house because the house will appreciate Millions of dollars. It sounds weird, I know, but you'll see what I mean. Just go to masterworks.art slash BERT. See the important regulation A disclosure at masterworks.io slash CD. That's masterworks.art slash BERT. You'll never believe it. I've always loved performing in Canada. Do you? I love I love Canada. I love Canada for a million of reasons, which probably the beer is just a higher alcohol. Well, content. the well, the, the, I mean. the men. Number one, the men. Isn't that crazy? That I love Canadian men have a a sturdiness to them that where they're the the softest of a Canadian man right. is like a dude that lives in Colorado off the grid. <laughs> right. Like you know, like I always say, Canada's like Colorado but with a big dick. <laughs> like it's it's just like the you go to Edmonton and every one of those guys has got a hand that, that feels like a gloves on it already. Right. But a glove that's really fucking worn. Yeah, like a glove you've been wearing to I do can't, hard labor. I, for, I can't explain to those t-shirts are being printed right now as we speak. Somebody's <laughs> up there printing Canada is Colorado with Wait, a big day. Did did um did Carnival Eats start in Canada? It's uh it's created by a Canadian production company. But did you start um, it on like the Canadian Food Network? It's on Food Network Canada. It's also obviously on Cooking Channel down here. And when the show first started, it was on Great American Country Network. But the most 
one of my biggest missteps. Yeah. So like you'd get, uh, you know the GAC. Are very you well, very yeah. well. So wait, I'm the generation before you, and right. like I was Scripps. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so Scr- I was tail end of Scripps. Yeah. Yeah. The um, I was like the last person to get fired by Scripps before they turned into Discovery. Right. And, and then you were probably yeah, it's probably part of the reason they sold. <laughs> you know, they were just like <laughs> I, dude. That that was the greatest company to work for. That was the greatest. I I will say group of men and women yeah to work for the 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 people i worked for the i think the people that i I didn't know many of the people that came in but the people i worked for kathleen yeah kathleen to this day uh what what's her can you type in i think she's head of all direct i think she's a director of of discovery right now i don't know what she does she's in charge of hgtv diy fucking magnolia kathleen uh, samsonite is what's her last is that her last name samsonite Sa- samsonite oh no i was kathleen way off. harrigan that was a dumb and dumber reference kathleen uh, harrigan? anybody picked that one up Ka- it's kathleen with a k <laughs> I love the, Who spells uh, Ka- the tech the tech booth got my dumb and dumber joke there samsonite i was way off <laughs> uh no go to go to so rosie o'donnell does a <laughs> That that woman was uh, a blast. Yeah, that woman was a blast. Uh, there were a bunch of these dudes that ran scripts, like Ken and 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 Kathleen Finch. Kathleen Finch. Yes. Kathleen Finch is a fucking badass. And she's you, uh, she's listening, Kathleen. If you're listening, Kath, they let me tell you still something. still love. I spoke to deaf ears at that network about the the had anyone listen to me, they would all be making tons more money i talked to them about podcasting in 2010 and i said you guys own the lifestyle department you go to upfronts and i'd say yeah i'd say you're listening to people in upfronts brag about magazines magazines are on the way out i don't know the fact that anyone is bragging about how many magazines they're moving is is comical considering uh, everyone's wearing, you know, using iPads. And I said, and podcasting is the future. Right. I said, you have a built-in set of talent. You have a built-in ad sales department. You have, I said, for a very minimal investment, let me start the uh, the podcasting branch of scripts. We will get Alton Brown. We'll get Andrew Zimmern. We'll get Anthony Bourdain. We'll get Andrew, uh, Adam Richmond. We'll get and I saw Bobby Flay. And I said, let me explain to you. You were ahead of the whole oh, curve. You were- way beyond. Wait, I still am. I'm, 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 <laughs> I I'm, still am. I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm being dead serious. How many people are starting podcasts right now that have no fucking idea what they're doing? Dude, I just love the confidence and the fact that there was oh, no, 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 0.1 it's seconds of delay it is, there. It is. There's no. <laughs> look, I am, I am consistently aware I'm ahead of the curve with podcasting because I was lucky enough to be into it i was into it i found ricky gervais's very early on yeah i felt i mean i became friends with joe and started doing joe's podcast yeah i was lucky enough to listen to joe and tom and joey and all my friends and start my podcast now i have two i have three podcasts i I told scripts i said let please let me start a podcasting division for you i said picture this the next upfronts you say we have the largest lifestyle podcasting brand in the world they would have owned it. They would have fucking owned it, and they could have very easily meshed it. And uh, but I think they just were like, uh, someone at one point told me we're not, we're not in the business of the internet. Right. We're in the business of television, which obviously now where's you can that see person now? That, uh, is not, does not have a job. <laughs> right. They're they do, they're throwing they're, garbage out there. Yukon Denali. They're not throwing garbage, <laughs> but they do not have a job. They do not have a job. They are not. They're not working in anything right yeah. now. Yeah. And so, uh, it's been a fun home for Carnival Leeds. It's uh, it's still good people over there. And it's oh, there's like such good, great, you know. there's such great, great fucking people that uh, that you, and especially when you have a hit, when you have a show that's a fucking hit, yeah, everything's fun. I remember auditioning for the show, and I knew, I knew it. Ooh, when tell I me read about, it. tell me about it, tell me about the audition. I was doing a lot of scripted stuff. Like I said, I was getting shot in things left, right, and center. Uh, and I was hosting like live events, uh, as a part-time job because of course, every actor for the most part needs another gig. Yeah. So on weekends, I, when I was younger, I was doing bar and bud mitzvahs and weddings. And then I transitioned into corporate stuff. And I think I just realized I loved 
the freedom. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a person who doesn't want a script. I'm super comfortable. It's like if I'm hosting an event and it's like, Noah, we have a technical problem. You got to go out on stage and kill seven minutes right now. It's like, oh, yeah. good, hey, man, a live audience. I mean, dude, I'm, I'm telling you, a live audience, uh, when you feel it and you know that they're there in your hand and it's just like, I'm I'm in this. Yeah. Those moments were so exciting and I loved it so much. I went to my agent. I said, I'm doing all this hosting stuff and I'm doing all this acting on camera. I'd love to bring them together. And literally a couple of weeks later, I had an audition for an untitled food project. I went in and I read the little one pager in the audition room. And it was like, we're looking for somebody to travel around America, eating the craziest carnival food. And I was like, this is me. It was one of those moments where I was like, there's nobody who could do this show better. I felt it. I knew it. I was a huge fan of diners, drive-ins and dives, you know, having come off that like massive kind of movement. I knew the format. I went into the audition and they gave me a cupcake and they were like, just look in the camera. Imagine it's a burger. Tell us about it. And we hadn't shot any episodes or whatever. And I remember I took the cupcake and I turned to the camera and I was like, we're here at the Fall View Fair, checking out the most exciting whatever. And I just like went into like a whole intro. Like didn't even yeah. talk, whatever, explaining where we were. We've got Bill the Vendor who's hooked us up with one of his craziest creations. Look at that. Double patty, triple cheese. I'm pointing out all the things I'm breaking down yeah. with the crispy, salty bacon. Uh, and then took a bite and the whole bit. And I left and I was like, yeah. Like you feel good. You knew, I just knew it went well. I got a call back and it was like a formality at that point. And then we started filming it. And it was like the first vendor I ever shot with a guy was, his name was lobster. Steve. He's not in the industry anymore. He had cats on leashes all over the place. And uh, he made lobster rolls. And I remember just like diving into the segment and it finished. The director was like, Holy shit. That was great. And man, we've just kind of kept going ever since. And uh, it's such a blast. I mean, I, I really, I know the food and the vendor's name and that's it. When we start rolling, it's like, you're making this with Jim, go. You have, you have an authentic curiosity. And I, I, I'm going to tell you, and, I, and I've, I've always been drawn to curious people. Yeah. The, you have an authentic curiosity, whether or not at times you are putting it on or not? I don't think so because I go, you really genuinely give a fuck. The only other person yeah. I know with an authentic curiosity is fucking Rogan. Yeah. He is the most curious. I remember one time having a conversation with him and saying, he was we were talking about an idea he had for something he wanted to do. And I was like, dude, I don't give a fuck. Whatever you fucking do, I want to watch because if you're interested, I'm interested. Yeah. Like this, and that's what makes Carnival Eats so great is that. The fact that you're interested, the fact that you genuinely, even if you poke a little fun, yeah. you're not mocking anybody. Yeah. And, it, and, and and it's so easy with that show to go into it and be like, man, we're deep frying a piece of bacon. You know, this isn't that complicated. This isn't rocket science, whatever. But you know what? You say what you want about the vendors. There are people who have culinary backgrounds, who have years of training, who have a passion for food, who yeah. just don't want to work in a restaurant, who love the outdoors, who love traveling across the country. Uh, I'm so happy that we've been able to like shine a light on that industry and get rid of that kind of carny whole thing that we, again, a lot of us grew up with. Yeah, yeah. There's just like a lot of hardworking, good fucking people out there. Dude, one of, my, one of my favorite carnival eats and, and I had this, because we used to do, Birth Conquer was all at, at uh, theme parks. Yeah. And you would get some of them every now and then. Mostly regular fare at all of these theme parks. Yeah. Cheeseburgers, chicken fr- uh, chicken tenders, right. french fries, hot dog, maybe a hot dog. I don't know. It's choking hazard. Right. But like <laughs> one time we were at a a little bit of a mashup, a little bit of a, a different place. And they had the foot long hot dog with the uh, potatoes wrapped around it oh yeah like they they had they had spiraled the potatoes yeah and they had and i'm telling you <laughs> i took that down <laughs> yeah like it was man. my first night in prison and i wanted to make friends yeah i was like ha, ha, ha. yeah and uh <clears throat> but i remember them asking me to describe the food and i was never good i was never good because i eat so fast right <laughs> and wow. so like so we'd have problems shooting beauties because 
I have to eat food hot. Right. And I would eat it before they could get beauties sometimes. Right. And I would eat it so fast they couldn't even, like, I, they'd be like, how was it? And I was like, it was really good. Right. <laughs> and they'd be like, well, tell us about it. And I was like, you saw me eat it. Yeah. You, you could see it was good. Yeah. I had a hard time with food because there's, there's cliches when people talk about food. There's cliches where they're like, oh, the, the this or the that. And, and, and you never fall into the cliches. You know what? I, I've always approached the whole food thing. And shout out to the Food Network and to, again, to like the, the whole like kind of production side in the sense of food has embraced me as one of their personalities. I'm not a chef. Mm -hmm. I, and the real talk, if there's three of us in this room, I'm the fourth best chef here. I mean, like, <laughs> I, it's just not my thing. But I'm an eater. You and, your I, I, wife, you, know? you and your wife look like you live such, before the child, but such a fun fucking life that every night was like, let's get dressed up, let's go out to eat. Let's get dressed up, let's have a night. Yeah. Your, your, your Instagram made, made me as a dad of two so fucking jealous because I was like, every day was a new pair of shoes. Every outfit was amazing. Your wife is stunningly beautiful. And, so, and you guys together are this like, these like, two pencils in the top <laughs> I always say people pocket. must be like when they see us out together like he must be rich <laughs> or you know um yeah well I'm a food I'm I, I grew up in a big family there's eight of us eight kids That's, oh my god you I know? fucking forgot about that yeah so my, you we, know, yeah keep going I'm 10, gonna, 10 back to people there. with my parents in the house so food was a big deal literally platters were like kind of on the table so I grew up in a place and in a, an environment where uh food was a big part of it but also like when I say real food, I mean the food that 98% of the country eats. Yeah. The, the sous vide, foie gras, whatever. There's a time and a place for it. But I think shows like Carnival Eats and when I get to you know play on guys' grocery games and uh, hosting you know some of the stuff I do up in Canada, it, it's a chance to just be like real. Yeah. I'm a guy who can explain when I bite in to a bacon-wrapped, deep-fried pizza slice what it tastes like My in like... <laughs> In like just layman's terms, in yeah. regular everyday talk. And I think people like connect with that. And one of the cool things is that your show wasn't so many of the things people have to eat on Food Network are so many of the same things. So many people have the um the I'm trying to think of the 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 go-tos, which are, you know, seems like uh uh, uh, the crisp of the bacon, the ba the lettuce, the, the 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 sauce, really kind of fine. You every thing you eat is like this thing that no one's put in their mouth before, right? And you're like, it's really hard. It's really <laughs> there's a lot going on here. <laughs> I mean, 878 <laughs> deep fried items in. Uh, I still have moments where I bite into something and I'm just like, I didn't think this was gonna work. <laughs> you know, like yeah. this was a weird combo, but it works. So wait, you know, eight fucking kids. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, tell me about, I don't think three older and four I younger. only know you, yeah. I only know you as, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this, but like, say it the wrong way. Shiny, sparkly Noah. Wow. Like, like every, I, I, you're, 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 you're a manicured guy. You, you, your hair is always done. You have, you always look nice. Yeah. You have, you, you have great sense of style. I know you're a shoe guy. I know they're like. And and I and I have to say this: the compliment, fool around? the compliment right goes now? to your wife. Is your your wife is remarkably beautiful, and so you're an, um, you're like a six, but you put her next, you put you next to her, and you become an eight very easily. At, at what point <laughs> do you start to go like he keeps talking about how hot my wife is? <laughs> but uh, she she classes you up. <laughs> he pulls us in this photo here. Uh, <laughs> If you were married to a six, out. you would look like a four. Dude, Bert, the crazy part about her, <laughs> the crazy part about her is that she's getting her PhD right now in social work. She is really the smartest person I've ever met. I mean, she is one of those people where you're just like, we're all supposed to get one thing that we yeah. do well. You know, you got one thing I do. I, we don't know what it is, but <laughs> it's there. Uh, I got the gift of gas. She got like a bunch of shit. You know what I mean? It's like, let me try singing. And, and yeah. then the guy's like, oh, I'll sign you a deal. It's just like, uh, it's wild. She's one of those people. But uh, she makes me better in every way, shape, or form. 
Um, but I want to know the sloppy Noah. I want to know yeah. eight kid Noah. Are you the youngest? Right in the middle, which is probably part of the reason I'm a, I'm a performer and uh, fell in love with like entertaining at such an early age. So how did you get your parents? To te- I know, one thing I know about middle kids is there is something that gets their parents' attention. Right. Like the, the oldest is always the oldest. The youngest yeah. is always the baby. Yeah. But there's something in the middle that gets their parents' attention. Was it? performing a hundred percent i think it was like a busy house with a lot going on and you're at an age where of course you you want attention you want your moments and i i remember i don't i want to say my oldest brother's uh bar mitzvah i decided that i was going to do a performance to putting on the ritz uh, right what year is this I by mean, the way is a this, great song i remember when putting on the ritz came out and uh you know the voice it felt so old that whatever and i had a move it was like a i would do it now but i would blow out both my knees and you would see bone turn to dust but i would jump up in the air and land on one knee kind of like those like orthodox like whatever that thing and i practiced in front of my mirror in the bedroom and the day came and the circle happened and I got in the middle and did it. And I, I refer to this moment because I feel like this was the point where I was just like, look at the, look at the reaction. Look at what people are feeling. Look at what's happening. I love being able to make people feel this. Yeah. And literally from that moment, was a was a performer and an actor and knew what I wanted to do. I never wavered. I never was like, I might be an archaeologist. It was like I wanted to be a kid. I wanted to be a, a performer since I was a kid and stuck with it. Um, so I would say, yeah, growing up in in that kind of madness made me find that way to, you know, look at me, kind of look at me. Two things. Two things first. Also, write one down. Um. Uh, Gene, have you Gene ever seen, Parmesan? No, have you ever seen? Shout out Arrested Development. Anybody? What's name? the? Have you ever seen putting on? What, what's his name again? Halston. Halston and I. It's because you guys are so tall. Halston clearly has a weird, uh, shitty sense of humor like Samson me. Samsonite. He really <laughs> likes my gags. Um, <laughs> putting on the Ritz with Gene Wilder. Have you ever seen that? Uh, in Young Frankenstein, have you ever seen? Oh, I've seen Young Frank, of course, an icon or whatever. Is there a putting on the Ritz scene in there? What? I don't. I, I'll start laughing. I go, I'll start laughing. I will. It will be the one thing that I think about all day long. Frankenstein. Oh, wait, have you have you never seen <laughs> Young Frankenstein? No. So so um, <laughs> it's so inappropriate. It's hold on. Don't hit. Don't hit play yet. Don't hit play yet. So so um. Don't hit play. Don't hit play. <laughs> oh, so man. He teaches him how to do putting on the Ritz. Do you remember this? If you I haven't do seen now. this in a while, I, I got to fucking it listen to it because it is, it is the fucking funniest fucking clip. Of, I mean, it's who's, a- who's the, he, this was Raymond's dad, and he's, he's since passed. Peter, what's his name? I mean, just the thumbnail. So gets you excited. So for anyone listening if, who has not, and a lot of people I don't think have seen Young Frankenstein, it's uh, it's um, Gene it's a, Wilder creates a Frankenstein. Yeah, Mel Brooks. I mean, this Mel is Brooks like a Mel this. Brooks classic. Back in like, and in order to, I think, in order to introduce his Frankenstein, Frankenstein, <laughs> Frankenstein to the people, they rehearse how to play putting on the Ritz together as a duo. And because he has a limited capacity, because he made him, he has him say, sing, putting on the Ritz. But it's, it's, I mean, it makes me cry. Okay, just play it. If he wanna... does a knee drop move. <laughs> it's like looping in the background. I fucking. Oh, man. Uh, that's what, the one thing. I, wa- I don't know if you're able to talk about this or meaning meaning i don't know if you know about this or if i'm just imagining something different but what is the what is the jewish path to toronto like i mean i know the one the one to brooklyn i know the one to i know the one to miami i know the i know the jewish to to los angeles i i 
not to say that I didn't know there were Jews in Canada, Canada, Canada. <laughs> yeah. But but what is that? And and also a family of eight seems so large. Yeah. Is were you were you guys conservative or no? My, you know, my mom was Christian, my dad was Jewish. I grew up in a family that that's like, that's pretty aggressive right there. Yeah, that's progressive. I and we aggressive. celebrated everything. <laughs> I mean, like uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, Easter, poor yeah. whatever. I mean, we uh, you know celebrated it all. Like a lot of families, and I feel like as generations have gone on, it, it, I don't know if this is if 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 a lot of religions feel this, but I know that in the Jewish community, it's like I feel like a lot of people have kind of lost touch a little bit with like the the kind of you know the lighting the Shabbat candles on Friday night. Yeah. When I was little, we we would do that, and then it slowly, I think, as there were more kids, it kind of became more of just like lighting candles for the glow and the moment of whatever. And yeah. then it's, it kind of drifts away. Uh, it's never been a huge part of my life. It was a big deal when I was 13. Cause I got like, a bar mitzvah. I, was like I think I got $3,800 or something like that. <laughs> At that time, I was like, what do I buy first? Yeah. A yacht. A I remember vacation home. The folklore of Jewish kids bar, bar mitzvah bag. Yeah. The fucking money that came in. And I didn't have was. parents that made me keep it in an account until I was 21 or whatever. So I was oh. uh, I was buying, uh, you know, original Sega Master System games like tell them that there's no tomorrow. So just out of curiosity, does your your what's the eight kids? Yeah. M- a split huge split. swing. Split split. Uh, oldest, my brother Ricky, who's actually a, an LA uh, resident now, uh, is in his mid fifties, and my youngest sister Madison, who's out on uh, the west coast of Canada in Vancouver, uh, green thumb like cherry picking farmer. Yeah, uh, she's in her late twenties. So oh, wow, you know, my dad's been you know making babies for for decades. Where's your dad? Where's your is your dad grew up in Canada? He born and raised. Yeah. Um, and just love sex, I guess. Like just, you know what I mean? Uh, Wait, same mom? No. Okay. No, which okay. is, yeah. Uh, s- married, had the oldest three, kept the kids, married my mom. She had me and four more. I'm I'm, uh, I'm the first one of Gremlins 2, the new batch. Like I'm the, you know. <laughs> Wait, so. Which, by the way, on a quick side note, if you go back and watch Gremlins, it's fucking terrifying. I always thought of it as a kids movie, but when you go back and watch it, it's it's horribly yeah. like scary. It's not it's not a kids movie at all. Well, I think the whole the premise was they were the the gremlins destroyed the Japanese bombers. <sighs> they took right? that old woman on that. Remember those chairs that go up the staircase? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they like wire it, and she goes up at a hundred miles an hour and blows seen, out the. I haven't seen Gremlins in forever. Why is that not a remake, <laughs> dude? I, literally it's happening right now if I'm you sure. could make like, one movie from your childhood what would it be and who would you cast uh bugsy malone which probably nobody remembers was scott bayou jody foster well, bugsy all malone. kids bugsy malone is a movie where there's no adults the world is only kids but they're gangsters it's like the time of of like tommy guns and and like so the cars are old timey 1950s, whatever, but they're pedals and the guns shoot marshmallows. And when you get hit with a Tommy gun marshmallow, like you're 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 dead, but you're not. You know what I mean? It it's a musical, but all look it's at these musical? kids. Look at these four kids with Tommy guns backing this kid up in an alley. And he's like, no, no. Your and they're Robinson? like, tell him big buddy Roxy told Robinson. you not to whatever. You like, fat Sam? boom, look at this. They unload on him. Whatever game it was, everybody was playing. Sure. And there's, there's a voiceover Roxy like Ray Liotta in one of these movies where it's like, you didn't mouth off to the kids with the, you know, whatever. If you knew what was good for you, like. Anyway, this movie, man, it's a hidden gem. Jesus, I got, yeah. I, I can't believe I, this slid past me. And it's like, uh, well, look at the fun. Look at the time. Yeah, it's like kids in the barber shop with like getting their getting their haircut with the hot towel, and somebody comes up and instead of the neck slice, they put a pie in his face, a marshmallow pie, to imply really? like he's done. I wanted one of these doors. Bugsy Malone. Oh, when we did the renovation on our house, I put in a, like a beautiful home theater in the basement. I was this close. 
to having some kind of like piano where you have to play three notes or like something that, that door, unlocked. That door right there. Isn't really a is, door? No, no. So that was going to be, that was initially going to be a, a fake door. A fake door was going to be put in there and then it would push out and open. But uh, there's something wrong with it. I forget what it was that was wrong with it. But we had, a, I wanted that to be a fake door. Right. I didn't want anyone to know there was a gym on the other side of that. <laughs> I've, I've, I've had, I've had a lot of, I, I want to build a safe gym. room. I want to build a safe room. <laughs> There's so much I want to do that my wife, that I was like, like I wanted a moat. I wanted a tunnel. But this is it. You've got this beautiful new house. You yeah, yeah. No, start. but I wanted, I wanted a moat. So where the, where the trees are, I wanted a moat behind the trees. We couldn't do that because it would destroy the roots. But what, hold on. What kind of, are we talking like a medieval moat where like it's like a, swampy like and shitty? Or is moat. it lazy river Atlantis so, moat? So I was, I had sold her on a koi pond, meaning like a, a koi pond moat. Right. But the, it became super complicated because you'd need a bridge to get over, to get the cars over. Right. Uh, we could never bring the tour bus over the, over the bridge and so all of a sudden you're like okay all right fuck the moat then i wanted uh, i wanted this was the big one is i wanted a bomb shelter i wanted a bomb shelter underneath so we i mean you had we had so much time during the quarantine where this was just land and we were trying to figure out what to do with it yes and our buddy one of our buddies is like a big idea big follow-through guy right and he was like, you need one of those. He goes, bomb shelter. He was like, now's the time to dig it in. Put I, a fucking bomb shelter. I in don't there. know his name, but I like him. He's, and a, I he's agree. one of the biggest movie producers in this, in the country. I'm not a is, doomsday prepper, but, uh, I watch the news. I, I, I would feel a bit better if I had a underground bunker that I could stay in for a few weeks or months. So then we were like, all right, bomb shelter, right? But are you doing it like legit or are you just like, are Bomb you shelter. looking for a place that you can go down, flip those metal doors, close and like hang out for a bit? Or does it have filtered air? Does it have um, like three years of canned goods? Filtered air. Uh, no years of canned good. Here was it. You ready for the, the caveat? You eat your Bomb neighbors. shelter. No. Okay. Oh, no, okay. by the way. Okay. Oh. <laughs> just. <laughs> There's one neighbor I couldn't, I couldn't catch. He He's. He he's a fucking wild card. I could catch three, four of my five neighbors, but they're too old to eat. Right. Um, a tunnel from the bomb shelter into the house through the basement. That was my plan. But they're too old to eat. They're just. You're worried that it's like it's gonna be. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't think yeah. you want to eat. Like uh, like you're ripping it off. Though it's not fall off the bone. No. It's, yeah. This is dry over done. The you want a tunnel going from the bomb shelter back to the main house. Back to the main house. So that what you can put on the the gas mask, pop up into the main house, grab a little it was really, liquid death and get was, back. It was really a little bit of zombie esque. Like I, I I'm I'm a I'm a prepper in the sense that before the before the apocalypse, before the pandemic, I had said to Leanne, I want I I need uh something to drink filter my water with right and she was like why i was like i don't know just fucking something happens when i'm fucking fresh water right she was like okay let's not go crazy i said listen i'm gonna stock our freezer full of meat frozen meat right just in case and then and then i said you never fucking know you never know and she goes in what scenario will we be locked in this house and i was like i don't know i bought a ton of pasta and a ton of pasta sauce ton of beans so i bought a bunch of shit that keep in the in the in and and tons of frozen meat like right a freezer full of frozen meat and a ton of booze and the day we went into lockdown right yeah we get we're in they're, they're doing stay-at-home orders on monday or sunday and we're driving across country and i said do you need me to pick up anything because they hadn't the middle of the country hadn't believed in the pandemic yet so yeah. you could still stop at walmart's right and she goes honey you are ready for this I was like, what? And she goes, I, I've been making fun of you in my head for this fucking garage full of food. We are set. We've got tons of pasta. We've got tons of meat. We've got more. And, and, and you know, I, I stock liquid death in the cases. I have right. to the ceiling in my garage. Yeah. I have fucking, I've just, first of all, I love liquid death. Yeah. But I, I, I sign up, I get it delivered to my house once a month, once a week, I think. And so, and I, but I love it. 
But more importantly, it's nice to know you have fucking drinking water. And so I'm a little bit of a prepper like that. So I thought bomb shelter, tunnel to the house through the basement. Mm. Door, panel door that you don't know is a door. Back to your secret door. Guns. Let me tell you something. I was going to say the next question is guns. I bought guns. Is there a a six shooter under that side table taped to the bottom of it? Uh, First of all, number one rule of having guns. You don't tell anyone where your guns are because I found out. That was a test, Bert, (laughs) and you just passed it. There's one more test. We'll see what happens, but that's impressive. I bought guns. I bought guns before the, definitely before the pandemic. Can, are you allowed to tell me how many guns you own? Uh, uh, oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm stockpiling now. Right now, I've, I've, because, because double digits. What happened is du- no, 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 single no. digits, single digits still. Um, what happened is during the pandemic, during the uh, the fires in Malibu, one of my hardcore liberal friends was like, hey, man, can I borrow your shotgun? And I was like... Okay, so now we know you have a shotgun. I have a shotgun. Okay, so that cat's out But of I didn't the get the ch- ch- shotgun. I got the... You don't have a pump action? I didn't get the uncircumcised. I got the circumcised one. Oh, you don't have a sawed off? I don't have the... Ch- ch- right. What do you have? I like have the a- one that just goes... Huh. <laughs> it just goes... Huh. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> like, you, you have to put in the... Yeah, you, the you shells put in the shells, and right. then you just shoot it, and then they come out, but you don't go... Ch- ch- so... Um, Return it. I don't know if you can drink it. <laughs> Slightly used. I just walked into a store. I'm, I want to talk to the manager. I changed my mind. So, um, so. <laughs> I want to talk to the manager. So, I. Uh, Are you the manager? <laughs> Ron Bennington is one of my favorite fucking radio hosts ever. And he one time told a story. He's my favorite, one of my favorite Ronnie B stories. He lived in Florida. I grew up in Florida. He was like the big radio guy in Florida when I was a kid. Yeah. And he goes, he goes, one of the best and worst decisions I ever made. One time we're going to an after hours bar and we had a lot lot of Coke, but we don't have any booze. But I know the owner there and I know he's got booze and I know he's a gun guy. So I say, hey, tell you what, let's stop by, pick up a couple guns. We'll come back. We'll trade them for booze, trade them for a little Coke. Right. The guy's going to be cool with it. He goes, great idea. Great idea on paper until we walk into an after hours bar brandishing firearms where's the manager <laughs> so so uh so uh what was i just thinking about oh my buddy wanted to borrow a gun and i was like no man that's the deal when you're when you are a when you post online about gun control right. you don't get to borrow them when you need them you have to stand you gotta you gotta you gotta stand your ground, brother. Right. And just let them take your family over. That's how that fucking works. <laughs> I mean, his fault for not buying under 10 guns. <laughs> Dude, I, as we're talking about this, I'm buying more guns now. <laughs> like I'm as you said this, I went, I haven't bought a gun in a while. It's like, why is he on his phone? You're literally ordering up uh a six shooter. Do you, right you, now. Do you guns are illegal? Do I have a Canada. gun? Do you have a gun? I bought a fart gun yesterday, Bert. I mean, look <laughs> at me, buddy. You know what I mean? Like I'm a Canadian kid who grew up but in a do you guys have like uh wolves and stuff coming to your front door uh moose moose yeah well uh, when they're traveling as a group yeah uh have you ever seen a male fully grown male moose uh as if the alaskan airport board of tourism in alaska was like we need him coming back (laughs) cue the moose do you know what movie that's from cue the deer no funny farm have you ever seen funny farm with chevy Chevy chase Chase. sitting on the little tractor on the cover dude that movie is so fucking funny on so many levels, and I couldn't get my wife to like it. She goes, when he goes, he goes, the, they get the dog, and he goes, look at that dog run. Look at that dog run. He's still running. And then the dog goes, <laughs> right. I am a Christmas vacation. Oh. Uh, Chevy Chase, there's one movie, and that is it in my mind. I mean, Fletch is pretty epic, too. Huge fan of Fletch. But Christmas Vacation is the movie Christmas Vacation and Big Lebowski are the only two movies that I think I could write the script if I didn't, like, if it wasn't on, that I think I could, like, do it top to bottom. Big Lebowski. Big Lebowski is a movie I I was told about, told about, told about. Yeah. Okay, fine, I'll watch it. Watched it by myself, thinking, laying in a bed, laying in my bed when I lived over by Hollywood and Highland, and I was laying in my bed, and I turned it on, sat up in bed yeah hit pause went upstairs made myself a white russian yeah lit a joint and continued watching it and i was like 
Uh, this is, I mean, it is so great. Yeah. And I'm terrified to open the door. If I say one line, it's just going to create a floodgate of like epic moments. Uh, those are performances like John Goodman. That That is one of his greatest performances. It, what is it? Sh- Sh- Shomer Shabbos. This is Shomer Shabbos. I don't roll on the Shabbos. I don't roll on the Shabbos. He's got a gun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he points it at the Jesus. What? So then let's talk. Don't fuck with the Jesus, man. Let's talk. Like, we were, ta- I, we were talking about this on the tour bus. Movies that defined your sense of humor as a kid. Yeah. Now, I got lit up because I don't know why. It was one of my friends that lit me up. Yeah. Was like, uh, oh, you're not going to talk about. I said, maybe I said uh, that it was greatest comedies. Right. But th- these are obviously the ones that form your personality. They define you. Yeah. You watch these comedies and you, part of you becomes either Ty, uh, Ty, whatchamacallit, in, is it Ty Trainer in, uh, in Caddyshack, uh, Carl or, wow, nice. or Rodney Dangerfield. You become you, one of those characters you, yeah. You lean towards, and then it informs you as a young man, and then you watch your next one. It's a little bit of Fletch, and you go, "Yeah, I'm a little Fletch. I'm a little slick. I'm a yeah. little. I'm saying the joke they're not getting." And yeah, uh, and I would say Chevy Chase was a big one. Like when I think about you know even Caddyshack, like his character in that. Chevy's one of those people that again, because I'm such an improv kind of like I love that freedom of of no script and all that. When you watch him, you can see the script supervisor sitting off camera just like, what in the world is happening? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, it's so natural. Everything feels like he's so real because it is. It's like he's got a sense of what the lines are. There's a moment in Caddyshack when he brings uh, the that like beautiful blonde girl back to his place and they're hanging out and he's playing the piano and the whole bit and he goes over to get a Perrier to pour whatever and the top he's already opened it and clearly had a sipper or whatever he pours he and he pours, puts the top on it whoa. and then goes whoa when he opens it right there's that's not in the script that is no. not written in the in the direction yeah that is a moment of like maybe they did a take it was open and he's like, leave this one here. Like it hits him that there's yeah. a gag. And that stuff is like, that's the money. That's the best. What's funny. I love that. What's funny. And I, I think you can probably speak to this more than I can. Cause you've done a lot more acting than I have, but like, I, I watch that and then I go, how did he sneak that in? Like, yeah. because when you, when you do a movie, you get, you do your wide, you do your singles, you do your tights, your meetings, yeah. maybe. Like at what point he just did that once and then they use that one. Like, Shout out to editors, man. You hope that you get an editor that, you know, that, here's the question. Uh, that here's finds the, question. the beauty. Who's funnier? Just, you gotta, don't, don't, just don't, don't think about it as an actor in it and improv and you get to watch him in the scene. Who's better? You ready? I don't like Chevy this. Chase or Jonah Hill? Chevy Chase. Jonah Hill. Really? All day long. Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. All day fucking long. Jonah <laughs> Hill is so talented. Agreed. He is so fucking good. Have you seen him in War Dogs? I was about to say, if you took Super Bad Wolf of Wall Street and War Dogs, like think about the three characters he plays in that and the and the the range. Uh, fucking Django Unchained. Yeah, he, he's in Django Unchained. He is so good in everything he does. Yeah. And, and that I go, I and like, I don't want to be an act. I mean, I want to be an actor, I guess, if I can do it myself. I can right. do the things I want to do. The only thing I'll sit in a trailer. I don't want to be an actor. The machine dropping on. No, no but, but like meaning like an actor, actor, actor. Right. Like I, the one thing I will sit in hair and makeup all day long in a trailer and I'll let a child tell me when to, when to walk out if I get a chance to work with Jonah Hill. Wow. I just want to watch him work. Wow. I want to watch him work. I want to see how he does it. Because I think, I bet if you watch Jonah Hill, I bet. I bet Jonah Hill makes people better actors in their career. That's how good Jonah Hill is. I don't think Jonah Hill understands how badly you want that to happen. That PA is the bane of your existence. And I will... You're willing to deal with that PA again just to work with Jonah? I would not deal with it to work with Chevy Chase. Wow. Yeah, I wouldn't. because Because I would have wanted to work with Chevy Chase on Caddyshack. I will say that I saw Chevy Chase on an online. There was like, because again, I'm a big time Christmas vacation fan. Somebody bought me a oh intimate God. 
sit down, virtual sit down with Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo. Uh, and it was like a hundred other people. And it was like, you could type questions and they would talk. And it was so awful. <laughs> he, they were just like, they didn't remember any of the stuff. He's like dirty AF. He's all over the place. He's like, well, I don't know, Beverly. I think the first time we met, you were uh, lying down. And you're just like, Ugh! like, yeah, there's a bunch of families here, Chev. Like it was, uh, it was not the Chevy that I uh, had. Something must have happened. To From nothing but trouble with John Candy and Dan Aykroyd, where Dan Aykroyd's nose looks, looks like, like a, a penis. Oh my God! Well, By the way, I, that movie gives me the creeps because it's awful. It's awful, but it, it's awful, but it, it taps into something I don't like. Um, I don't. I mean, I, I, I don't think anyone likes this, but I, the taking away of my freedom. I was gonna say it. There is an odd, uncomfortable uneasiness in that movie that is not fun it's just like upsetting almost they, like the idea that you can't get out that even if you think you can get out you can't get out oh i just I, I don't i don't even pull it up i don't like it oh and when the train's going around the table and they're topping up their hot dogs and <laughs> dan Aykroyd sucking on that sauerkraut dog with his penis nose just get that off the screen get, oh, just get it off God. the screen Ew, there it is don't look at the screen bird it's whatever you do don't look at that big that penis movie really nose disturbed me. on the screen don't look so then it's gone let pull up because Chevy Chase is a guy that he kind of, he kind of, I hate to say this, but created all of us. Yeah. All, all us comedians were in, grew up in the shadow of, of him. Yeah. Bill Murray. Yeah. I mean, Bill Murray and Chevy Chase are like two dudes. I Not even jo like John Belushi. I mean, uh, his lifestyle I've leaned into, but I, I, I liked the, I liked the sexiness of, I think I, I was so boring. Well, this is an epiphany that I'm about to share. I think I'm so boring, really, that as a kid, I thought that the drugs and alcohol would make me interesting, make me mysterious. You, looked, so sorry, you're saying you were so boring as a kid. I was just a regular guy. I right. didn't have depression. I didn't have, um, I didn't have a bad family life. I had a really great family, and I... I was good at sports, but I wasn't the best. I was just like, I was like a regular, I just was like a, right, like a C plus human being. And, and I think, and I remember I didn't have like a, I mean, I, I didn't have like a, an insane sense of fashion. I didn't, I knew what I liked. Yeah. I liked like kind of simple things. I liked being outside. I liked being, I liked fishing. I liked playing in the mud. I liked fucking baseball. I liked, I liked all those things. But I remember this is going to sound crazy. This is a very therapy conversation, maybe. You but the lie first down? time, do you want to put your head back? I do my therapy on my phone. <laughs> I the first time I, I got I had a drink. Yeah. The next day, that feeling of the hangover. Yeah. It made me feel cool. Really. I remember walking through Moss Brothers. Yeah. And and I was this is. This is extremely vulnerable thought. But uh, I remember thinking, place, I remember You're thinking, place. does anyone know how cool I am right now? Right. Like I am hung right. over. I'm in ninth. I'm in eighth grade, ninth grade. I'm a little. I'm fucking so rock star. fucking. I'm like. And I remember being like, oh, you yeah. have shades by the way, on? Maybe, Did you put shades on? Uh, if I had them, I right, would have probably. But I, I was so. I was so needy for like maybe it, whether it's approval or whatever that i think that's what i found cool about john belushi and chris farley right was that and I, and, and and did and, you associate that like drinking parting thing with coolness well no it well here's what's very interesting about this is i didn't really drink much in college i didn't drink much in high school i didn't drink much in college it wasn't until i went to russia when i was 22 that i really started drinking and right. i was drinking with the mob and, and we were having fun right and i knew that i was really funny when i drank like yeah. when i drank with them i was a little looser i felt comfortable right. saying things a little saying the thing i didn't have to think twice yeah. about liquid courage yeah yeah and then and then as i got into comedy i was like oh you can just do that sober also you can just say the thing you're thinking about i never clicked with drinking really never liked it man i i i never i when i sit down to a meal i never crave that alcoholic component i mean really? we all have our vices what's your vice i enjoy an adult cigarette 
Oh, you, you know. smoke? Well, listen, I'm in Canada. Uh, it's fully legal, coast to coast. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, so you're being like a, you okay. Know. I was like, I was like, just, uh, like a cigarette, like an actual yeah. nicotine I like, cigarette. I, like, yeah. I think a nicotine <laughs> cigarette has touched my lips three times. Two of them was in a play. Really? And once was maybe I was holding it for somebody and I had to like grab something with both hands. I smoked a I've cigarette. I've never smoked, I smoked a cigarette. I smoked a cigarette uh, two weeks ago for the first time in like, for the first time in 20, 22, since I was 22 years old. So 25 years, right. 27 years. First time in 27 years I smoked a cigarette. My buddy, uh, I won't say his name, but it's Tom Segura. He started, <laughs> <laughs> he started smoking again and he came outside and I go, are you fucking smoking? He goes, just every now and then. And I was like, he was like, you want one? And I was like, yeah, I want a, I want a cigarette. I haven't had one forever. And, and I had one, I couldn't inhale it. I was going to say, you must have just coughed up a lot. My lungs are really soft. I can inhale weed. I smoked a blunt uh, watching a movie the other day in, our, in, a, in a screening room. I smoked a full fucking yeah. blunt and I loved it. And I, and it wasn't that long ago that you weren't really dabbling in that world, I, right? Because when you were growing uh, some of your plants back at the smoking. old spot, you yeah. weren't you weren't partaking. I mean, I, here's the thing: then I watched like, a Cinco de Mayo drop, and you were uh, slow motion hauling a big fatty. I've gotten more into marijuana the older I've gotten, only because what it does for me now is if I do light a like the little dog walkers, yeah. If I light one of those, my drinking is over. Like I, I'll right. so like so you'll use it almost as like a, as like a fucking like an airbag like three just, like yeah right just, so like <laughs> uh, like to to not not tonight but like uh, tomorrow night um, I'll be in New York and I will I will do a show with my with my buddies Big J and Dan Soder tomorrow night it's called the bonfire and, and we will have drinks also did you just hear somebody hitting a bong no that's over my sink oh. It's my ice maker, really. But so then, so then, and what I will do is I will, um, I will inevitably smoke a joint with them. Right. And that joint will curtail all my drinking for the evening. Right. And so, you know, I just find there's moments where it's like, uh, like what? We're going to see Avengers Endgame? Yeah, I think I'll have yeah. a little toot. But, but so like if you go to a steakhouse, you don't want a martini to start the night. You don't want to. No. Because I don't. A, a, a vodka tonic would be my starting drink. And not i'm not shitting you the white russian because of lebowski yeah is my ender uh, uh maybe a nice pairing uh like a little glass of wine or something whatever i mean i'm not i don't i just don't it just you're not doesn't a teetotaler it's just not where you're going to listen get me on the bus yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. put a disc in my hand and a couple of cold ones and i'm like i'm ready to ride the ride <laughs> but when i'm sitting at home i don't have that like that moment <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. Out of all my sponsors, I really think this is the one that can most affect your life. You have no idea. Life can be overwhelming to all of us. It may not seem it to some, but trust me, many people are burned out, often without even knowing it. Symptoms include lack of motivation, feeling helpless, trapped, detached, fatigued, many more. Uh, I don't have to go into great detail, but I know you guys know I get burned out at times at the end of this tour and uh i've been grinding my teeth at night i've been it, they these things show up we associate burnout with work I, obviously i do but that's not the only cause any of our, any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out and better help online therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself talking with someone can help you figure out what causes stress in your life it really does i know it doesn't seem I know it feels like you have all the answers, but when you talk to someone, those answers kind of show up and you just need someone to listen to you and kind of pinpoint those answers. This is what is stressing you out, Bert. And then you go, well, shit. Now, once you see it, you can work on it. Once you're working on it, it's amazing. It's amazing how much therapy has fucking helped me. It is amazing. And when you're not in therapy, like you'll take a week off and you'll go, I got it. And then all of a sudden it shows back up again. That's why I love this sponsor. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to, like me. I like to get on the phone. I like to get on the cat treadmill, kill two birds with one stone, and talk for one hour. It is much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. BertCast listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Bert. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com 
slash Bert. If you are feeling overwhelmed, if you are feeling detached, if you are feeling stressed, if life is fucking coming at you from every angle, go to betterhelp.com slash Bert. Remember the last time you were at a gas station and you saw those horrible boner pills sitting by the, the counter and you thought, they're tempting. I know. But then you took a second and you saw what's actually in the pills and you were fucking horrible, horrified. They're terrible for you. The same that goes for the most of the products on the line in the market that claim to help men in bed who want a four-hour erection without the nasty side effects, heart problems, and possibly a trip to the fucking hospital to get rid of that thing. These are, these are the reasons I don't fuck with those. However, I do fuck with Joy Mode. I will be fucking with Joy Mode later tonight. Joy Mode is here to save the day. Whether you're happy or unhappy with your performance in the bedroom, why not perform better? That's such a fucking no-brainer. Why not a little better? Wouldn't you rather take a supplement that's designed to spice things up naturally than take a prescription drug that can have harmful effects for you down the road? You'll go to great lengths to biohack your way to a better mental or physical performance. Why not the bedroom? Joy Mode makes natural, science-backed sexual wellness products for men. Their sexual performance booster is like a pre-workout before sex. The sexual performance booster is designed to support erection, quality, firmness, and sex drive. It contains clinically supported doses of l cerulean argilinine, eulabonamine, and vitamin C. It was created with best-in-class scientists and biochemists PhDs. After taking the sexual performance booster, blood levels of arginine and yohobamine will increase, which is great. Meanwhile, the antioxidants from the vitamin C will naturally protect the nitric oxide from the oxidative degeneration, which will enhance blood flow, promoting active nitric oxide. Collectively, all of these things, they're going to enhance sex drive blood flow to the penis and resulting in better performance. That's all you need to know is you're going to fuck way better. That's all you need to know is that you will fuck like the guy you see in the movies. Joy Mode was created because the products on the market are terrible and they know they could do better. Prescription kill pills. I, by the way, I won't fuck prescription pills. They come with all the side effects and the over the gas station counter pills. No fucking thank you. How to take it and what to expect. Very simple. Tear open the sachet. Mix it with six to eight ounces of water. It's like your favorite electrolyte packet. And for best use, consume anywhere 45 minutes to four hours prior to sexual activity. You might as well just take one around six o'clock at night. You never know. You never fucking know. It's always good to have a hard dick. You'll notice better blood flow, better erection quality, and firmness, and increased sexual energy and drive. Do you want to spice things up in the bedroom and boost your sexual performance and do it naturally without prescription, nasty prescription drugs? We have a special offer for your BertCast listeners. Go to usejoymode.com slash Bert or enter Bert at checkout for 20% off your first order. That is usejoymode.com slash Bert for 20% off your first order. Thank you, Joy Mode, and Leanne thanks you also. I feel like there's not a lot of middle ground with me. I'm either the version that you talked about earlier where it's like I'm put together and I'm out with my beautiful wife and we're eating at some fancy restaurant that's like charging $32 for an eggs Benny, uh, or I'm in sweatpants, uh, you know, a couple of J's deep just like watching murderville on netflix or something you want to have a shout out will arnett have you watched any episodes of that no i haven't i'm downloading it hold on i'm downloading can it right i just the Everyone second i heard so the concept good. i was like first pissed off that i didn't come up with it uh second wishing that i was more famous that i could be on it uh and then third pissed off that they only did four episodes Who's conan o'brien's episode is epic marshawn lynch what is fantastic for people that don't know, it is a a, a a 30 minute little scripted cop show, except the celebrity who plays Will Arnett's cop buddy, like detective partner, doesn't know the script. So they literally walk into each scene not knowing they have to improv their way through it. It's super fun. The um I I'm eating Detroit pizza off my stomach. You know what I mean? There's two I wanna, versions. I, I'm, of I'm downloading it right now. It's a fun one. You know what I mean? I, Roll up an adult Siggy and just. I'm getting on a plane tonight. I wish I could do edibles. I'm not a big edible guy. It overwhelms no, me. No, same. I find this the buttery ones upset my stomach. All the like baked goods and whatever. Uh, also, there's something about the sound of the burning paper and the process of 
You know, it's not just the problem about problem. I've always had. I'm going to download. Here we go. I'm downloading the whole first season. The problem I've always had with these, some of these improv um, shows, yeah. is they're so indulgent. Like it's like you know, right. as we talk about Chevy Chase and Bill Murray and the brilliance of them. Yeah, it was the subtlety when I think some of them, and I'm not not Will Arnett or like some of them have been have missed the mark so much where you're like you're like i like everyone cast in this can you guys each didn't you learn the hey it's not about me thing in improv class right can you not go so over the top that your character is all i can see right and and you know what movie i found that in the most and this is so random horrible bosses two Oh, this is whatever. By the way, Horrible it, Bosses one was fucking amazing. Uh, absolutely amazing. And then the second one happens, and now you've got Charlie Day, Sedakis, and Bateman, and they are literally all doing gags over each other at the yeah. same time. Each scene is all three of them trying to like gag out the other one. Well, mm. there's a general. I don't have this generosity, but there's a generosity in great improv actors listening. Like the, I am not that guy. That's why I'm bad at improv. I just start right. going, talking. Right. Um, See, and for me, I think that's what people have enjoyed about uh, whatever I've been doing on, on, you know, online or whatever, is that I think they feel like it's real because I'm like, there's a few people who can forget that the camera's there and forget about ratings and do I look good and just be like present in the moment. Yeah. And that when I ask a question, I'm not thinking about my gag. I'm listening to what you say so that if you say something, I can jump on it yeah. and make a reference to that thing later or whatever. That, I think, is like important because people feel like they're, they're actually a part of something. I was interviewing Dwight Howard at the NBA All-Star Weekend a bunch of years ago. I used to do hosting stuff for Kia, and I would interview a bunch of the players. And... There's this massive crowd. He comes out. We're doing the fun interview. And I like to end it with like a fun little, you know, whatever. At the time, he's about to be traded from Orlando. So I was like, Dwight, I got to ask you one more question. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you this question. And I can see that he's just like, fuck, man, I don't want to talk about this at All-Star Weekend. I was like, you're stuck on an island. You can only bring three things with you. What are they? So he's like, all right. He's like, uh, iPad. I was like, okay, nice. Watch your shows, thing, whatever. He's like, uh, maybe the company of a beautiful lady and all the, you know, everyone screams. I'm like, well, lovely. And what's the third thing? And he goes, uh, submarine. And I'm like, oh, a submarine. Get, just float right out of there. He's like, no, no, man, submarine. And I'm like, oh, like a submarine sandwich. No, man, something to read like the Bible. <laughs> I was just like, Oop. submarine ladies submarine. and gentlemen dwight howard <laughs> one of those moments where it was like wow you you gotta listen you gotta like you know what i mean you're a bit distracted you hear whatever submarine submarine submarine, submarine, submarine. man submarine. and of course then he has to reference the bible like he couldn't be like fucking maxim magazine or uh, dwight whatever. howard's gorgeous isn't he he's a good looking man will you pull up a picture of dwight howard he is like you know he's like what you want a man to look like kevin garnett is, Kevin Garnett uh, is is more maybe, skinny, right? Well, I, maybe I'm a little biased because he's got the oval shaped head. Uh, you know, us us oval shaped headers. Uh, Look at Dwight; he together. is just fucking. I mean, Dwight's a character now. I mean, he's like uh, he's like in a video game where you get to like add in all the weird shit you bought at the store and like pick any hairdo and any armband combination. I'll tell you on a pivot, the most charming man i've ever met yeah is charlie day is that right charlie day there's nothing better it doesn't matter if you're a celebrity or whatever you still look at people with admiration with respect there's nothing better than meeting somebody you like and yeah. them being awesome charlie day. oh i met charlie day i met charlie day in 1999 1998 in i was 26 years old at paquito mas on sunset my buddy Croy and I think another one of their buddies, we all went and got uh, tacos. Yeah, and they're like, "This guy Charlie's, uh, he's an, he's came out here to be an actor. He's an improv guy. He did. I think they'd all this worked. is pre uh, Sunny in Philadelphia, way pre. Right. Now, I am, in my opinion, I'm just being honest, one of the more entertaining people. Like, if you have a story, I can 
I can keep I can keep you entertained. Right. Charlie Day. I have never been more taken aback by how fun and funny a human being has ever been. And I've met I've met the funniest people on this planet. Yeah. Charlie Day was so good at just captivating you. He was fucking yeah. fantastic. And I I was I I mean, I'm, there was a few guys from that group that you're in summer yeah. elder yeah in summer elder is that his name who's in lost he's in like vampire diaries oh, all right he was someone who when you met you kind of were drawn to he's pull him up just uh, you know who he is yeah but he was someone in that group of guys that you met and you were drawn to you were like well there's something fucking yeah. really intense about this guy yeah um i mean do you feel comfortable to flip this coin and and share the opposite side of these stories yeah. is there a person that you were like pumped to meet and then afterwards you left and you were like that's in summer am i saying his last name right summer what summer Halder. right he is he was fucking all razzle dazzle i mean really? like dude he was like and you know what the thing about him was and i expected like, like i said i only i only met i i would be shocked if either charlie or ian remembered me but you know they went on to have huge careers, so you remember those types yeah. of people. Um, I uh I remember running into Ian at uh Crunch in in the in the the Lemley Plaza, I think it's called, yeah. where Crunch is. And he and he was like two handed handshake, piercing eyes. Hey man, how you doing? It's yeah. good to see you again. And knew my name, and yeah. I was like, Johnny Knoxville, uh fucking Johnny Knoxville is the same way. Now who's bad? Who's someone who didn't sparkle for me and i was like i mean i don't mean that yeah, they're no, an no, awful no. person but just like one of those like oh yeah like that wasn't what i hoped for um like for me for sure the first time i met you <laughs> i was like just the air sucked out of the room you know and it was like oh he's like it's the it's the internet that adds yeah. that wow kind of dane had something where i was like how come i i consistently said as i met dane and i'd watch him interact yeah i was like how come he's not fucking famous right everyone said that yeah uh there's a comedian that we all know godfrey i remember i still to this day i go why is he not more famous yeah well, i remember meeting him and talent like, isn't the uh it's, only determining factor it's it's for, unfortunately talent is not let me there's i'll have an example of someone who i met who was successful and i was like i don't see it i've only heard rumors which is why i'm hesitant at whatever but i've, I've always heard mike myers was uh not as fun in person. Oh, oh, uh, oh, like oh. Austin you're... Powers. You know what I mean? Mike Myers. Like, oh, okay. Uh, then I can definitely say Tom Segura. Because <laughs> I definitely, I remember, I remember when he started getting successful, I was like, you're, are you getting famous? And he was like, if, he was if, like, if George Costanza has <laughs> uh, Vandalay Industries and, you know, Jimmy Buffett's got Margarita, is Segura ever going to get past that fucking arm snap? I mean, I... You it's say so his name, to... and all I see is like a skin sack, like a weird sock of skin flopping around. It really affected uh, me. Well, I think a lot of grown men oh, no longer play basketball. I think if you look at the activity levels of white 40 year old men playing basketball, it just dropped immediately. They were like, be. I, I, mean, I don't want that to be me. Nike, it's, Under it's like Armour, shark stocks attacks, must when be When shark plummeted. attacks happened in the summer, you saw people see, seeing people getting in the water. Rightfully so. Uh, he wore those pair of shoes one time. He had he just bought brand new. Is he going to auction those he shoes gave, off? He auctioned them off. He gave them and then gave the money to charity. I remember Segura being like, because I, I, I knew him so well. Yeah. I knew him so well. And Tom is not someone who does, he does not. He like he really does not care. Like yeah. he does not care about he, what he cares about is what he cares about, right? And the things like what people say about him online or think about him online or put in the comment section or if you go to dinner, if he if if you walk away and you're like, yeah, I don't remember that guy. Yeah. None of that shit registers to him at all. He, he literally does not give a fuck. So when he started getting famous, I remember being kind of shocked. Because I was like, but you don't even give a fuck about that. Right. And he was like, yeah, I mean, like that's Tom. He's just out there snapping arms and making dreams. Um, I'm sure I could think of other ones. The I'm trying to think of like people we know. I could say, I mean, I could 
I, I got to be. What, what, and who no, 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 no. I'm trying. I, I want what? a good one. I'm in it. Well, you're thinking I'm going to say a great Bill Murray line that ties in again. Uh, he said, everybody always wants to be rich and famous. I suggest just try rich first and see if that doesn't answer most of your problems. You know what I mean? It's well, like, uh, yeah, I like fame. You do. Yeah. I have no problem with but, it. But, but because you are a people person, you embrace it. It's yeah. like, for me, it's the same. I, I love getting to make a moment for somebody. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, you want to take a picture? You're goddamn right. I'm going to stop and take this picture uh, and make it fucking awesome because I may go on to 80 more moments, but you're going to remember this moment. And if I can make it awesome, then that's awesome. It's well, you know what it is, is it. And I think I'll use Tom as an example because he's my friend and I can say everything I want about him and he right. knows that I love him. And, and anyone listening to this knows that the worst thing I can say about Tom, he said words about me right. and they know I love him. No. Right. Tom is not impressed by fame. It's, right. uh, none of that has ever registered for him. There are a few things that he's like, he loves sports. Right. So if you're a pro athlete that he follows, he'd love to talk to you about it. Right. But like, he doesn't go chasing fame. Right. Which is, which is the, which is so ironic because people like Mike Tyson or have sought him out because they're fans. Right. And he's just like, oh, yeah, cool. Whereas I, as a child, was impressed by fame was for me something where i was like how did they do that right like i remember meeting my fa first famous person yeah my first famous person i met yeah was will smith and i was like big willie style and i was like how did i remember thinking how did you do it you seem so comfortable like everything was like a magic trick to me right he had a range rover and i was like and when i'm when i was a kid I, no one drove range rovers right. a range rover was like was like a fucking dragon like right. no one had him in tampa right and and i remember being like whoa i would my head would have exploded off my shoulders if i had met the fresh prince at a certain point in my life 25 26 years old and i would walk through places with him this was the coolest thing was to walk through a place with him yeah. and watch people be like the f it was like they were and i I've, I've said this i've said this analogy before because it's accurate it's like seeing a great white shark. Right. It's like you you hear about them, you know they're out there. Yeah. But when one swims by you and you're on a stand up paddle board, you're like, shut the fuck up. Right. Shut the fuck up. And I remember walking into places with Will and watching. And we went to a, get sushi one night, and uh, I mean, I learned so much watching him operate. Yeah. But watching him from afar, being the person that got to stand next to him and watching the way he behaved around people, he was so generous so kind so such a fucking gregarious and what i learned from him was he let everyone have their moment and he didn't fake it he right. was like a guy that if you recognized him he would be like he would make you comfortable i remember someone said he i apologize if i'm oversharing for will smith's life i'm probably apologize this is in the I red mean, table it's a pretty open book but he uh we got sushi in like santa monica or venice and uh he wasn't good with chopsticks right so he's using his hands to eat the sushi right, right? this is like yeah. it's like major faux pas in a sushi restaurant he's just right grabbing it with his hands and the woman came over and said did i not give you chopsticks and he goes i can't use them and she and or not to the some of the effect of like i don't i don't need them i'm, I'm just gonna use my hands right where it was it could have been an embarrassing moment and the woman felt like oh shit what did i just say to this and he made her her feel like it was his fuck up right and it was the way he reverse engineered that woman so she walked away going like she like he was so good at that yeah i remember his the one thing he said to people was one love he yeah. had a thing he'd say one love one love yeah and he just give him a big hug that guy was but in witnessing that i remember very distinctly and seeing the opposite i saw yeah. other people that were very bad at it and very rude yeah and i was like i'll never be that person yeah i remember one person who took that celebrity and abused it and he did he did the bad things with it right and i remember watching that going like you got this gift this the universe gave you the thing a thing that it only at the time it only gave to like a handful of fucking people yeah and you're not going to do what, what will did with his yeah 
I mean, I, to me, it's like it's 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 part and parcel. You want to reap all the great benefits of getting to, you know, be in this industry and be successful and all that. Part of it is uh, taking those moments to make those moments. It's like, again, I, doing those all-star weekends for the NBA, there were players that would get there and you could, and it's all-star weekend and all to you, but pa- party all night, yeah. come in ha- hung over, this is your thing. But the ones that sit there and like sign it and hand it, where it's like you wait in line for three hours and I'm, I don't even get to make eye contact with you. Like your face is just down signing yeah. and then your hand goes up to hand me the eight by 10 and I'm out. Uh, it's like, I don't know, man. Give, yeah. Give the, give the, per- the person waited three hours to me. You get, make a moment, make it, make a special moment. We went, we went and Will drove us to uh, some meeting at uh, either CAA or a ABC or, wherever in centuries yeah. city. And I remember this, is how naive I was. I remember thinking he knows this valet guy, right? That's how he treated him. Right. Yeah. He knows him. He knows him very well. I go, he's here. He must be here every day. The way they were laughing and right. the way they were joking that he must be here every day. And I said to him in the elevator, I was like, I was like, how long have you known that guy? And he goes, who? I said, the valet guy he goes, I didn't know that guy. Right. And I was like, there it is. But the way he treated him, and I and I remember I remember witnessing that. And 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 I and also one of the other very very big Im, impacts on me was watching, hearing stories about Bill, Bill Murray. Right. Like when when you oh started hearing the stories yeah. about Bill Murray. Have you watched that documentary that like follows all the like iconic stories about which ones are true and which yeah. ones aren't? Like he shows up at a frat house and parties and then cleans their dishes or stops someone in a park and says and walks yeah. away and like you know th- those moments where you're just like he's created such a beautiful lore um i have a question for you Shoot. because i watch you with the smoke me and all the stuff on the road and whatever and i host this show in canada called wall of chefs which should be on down here i think it's so I, awesome i saw a, tra- a, a trailer for it on youtube yeah it's it for home cooks like regular people yeah compete in like a chop style you know competition environment except they're cooking in front of 12 of the country's biggest most famous celebrity chefs so they're literally watching you and giving feedback and thing whatever and then they judge and it's an elimination but the first round of the show is called the crowd pleaser where each home cook makes their dish the Mm. one that they know is their headliner what's yours what's your what's your you know what I mean? People are coming over. Your go-to. You're like, I know I can rock out. Do you have one? Do you have a? a, a now, now. Uh, I mean, my go-to always, and the thing that people ask me to always cook is steaks. I, I cook steaks perfectly. Yeah, I never overcook them. They're always perfect, and I've always been a presentation Florentine. Like, chop them up, and in the nice manageable so not everyone's right. getting their own steak right, right, right everyone's getting a piece of steak right i've always been a big protein guy but if you're saying my mouth's watering the one thing i hit out of the fucking park and it's because i learned how to make it and i'm i've i, I, I made can't it wait to, you're really watering it's like we got to get you a bib pasta carbonara really i i didn't see that coming. i took great pleasure in learning how to make that and I focused on it with, so I did a show called Something's Burning, which is like a cooking show. Yes. That, by the way, everyone is now coming out on my YouTube channel. You can find it. Something's Burning is coming out on my YouTube channel. You can find it. Uh, <laughs> that was a fun. Soon. When is it coming? When's the first one come out, Halston? In the next few weeks? Okay. Um, and uh, And I learned how to make homemade pasta yeah and i learned how to make carbonara like i had i I ate with the the guy who won the pizza championships he has a place in rome and he made a carbonara um yeah pizza yeah oh my mouth's watering i mean you got me too so fucking good it's contagious he created an ice cube to put over the yolk so that he could put it into the into the into the oven have the bacon and everything and all get melt and then he could break through yolk and make the carbonara i'm telling you right now you come on wall of chefs you start putting ice cubes on yolks oh dude you're that going guy, to the second guy, round that guy at the time now i'd definitely invest in his business yeah. he was like i was thinking of coming to america and opening one of these 
uh, in LA and I was like <laughs> I was like bro pizza is bro. another I mean obviously Carnival Elites is like you know we've had so many different pizzas but it truly is the greatest canvas for the wackiest combos like we've done chicken and waffles where it's like chopped up pieces of ego yeah. waffles with chicken tenders maple syrup poured all over a pizza it's like yeah it's fucking delicious yeah spaghetti and meatball pizza fucking yeah dude can I tell you that one of my favorite go-tos is always a hot dog? Yeah. Anything hot dogged out, hot dog something. When 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 you bring the first hot dog where I was like, because I, I was a very strict uh, ballpark dog guy, meaning it had to be uh, ketchup, mustard, and relish. That was what my hot dog was. And then I remember getting a taste of the Chicago dog yeah. with the the peppers, the tomatoes, the pickle, the celery salt. Right. The, and I'm and a, and the mustard and the green relish and I remember going, my mouth's watering. I'm watering nonstop. I have never stopped at the Chicago airport and not gotten one of those hot dogs. Right. And we're talking about an airport dog. Shout out to hot dogs in general. Shout out to hot dogs because there's not a lot of foods that I could sit down and say, "Hey, Bert, I'm going to put this in front of you. This is lips, assholes, and stomach lining." Yeah. That's churned up in a machine into like a pinky paste. Yeah. Imagine like a bag of liposuction. And then we're going to stuff that into this like condom and uh, put in a little bun when you have a bite. You know that's what it is. And yeah. you keep eating it. That to me is an impressive food. Man. You know? I love Oh, that. I know what turnips are assholes. Like you just keep eating. I, I, you know what we did the other day? We went, we were looking for somewhere to go eat. Oh, this was like my favorite thing I've ever done. And we walked by and we saw these people in line at an arena. We're like, where are they going? There was a hockey game. So let's go have lunch at the hockey game. No, you didn't. Minor league hockey game. We went into a minor, we bought tickets to a minor league. <laughs> bought tickets to. To go have beers and hot dogs and pretzels and pizza. And I bought a jersey. We ended up spending a ton of money, but we had the best lunch at a minor league hockey game. Because it was like everything we wanted. It's like, who doesn't want a hot dog? Who doesn't want nachos? And we fucked it up. And I was like, more of that. We went to a, a we were looking for lunch in, in uh, Durham, North Carolina. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we're seeing where the Durham's Bulls play. Duke's playing this team from Massachusetts. We walk in, we're like, let's have lunch here. <laughs> it's like, the and then you have lunch and watch a little bit of a baseball game. You're like, I'm out. You're having all your business meetings now at the LA Robins minor league. Uh, That's not a bad yeah. fucking move. I mean, if you, if you were like, it would leave a, an impression. If you told people, you know, the best business meeting I've ever had was at an airport one time. And nobody was flying. I know we said, Hey, let's just meet in Dallas. I, I'm right. fly, I'm flying in. I'm flying on the road. Why don't you fly into oh, Dallas? Oh, yeah, it's a bit different. I was, I was no, like, I thought it was no. like a random, do it, like, the, do you want to go to the airport for no, lunch? At the airport, at the airport in Dallas, I was like, I wish I could. I'm flying. For, I'm go, going on the road. And they're like, well, how long's your layover? I said, it's like two and a half hours. And they're like, why don't I meet you at the, at the Admiral's Club? We'll get right. a boardroom. We'll have the meeting there. And I went, fuck yeah. You rent the boardroom at the Admiral's Club in Dallas. I haven't been in a fucking admiral's club in forever these days but you go in and you had the meeting there and then i was like and i was like what are you doing there's like i'm flying home and i was like that's fucking genius you don't have your next business meeting at some little small town minor league arena i think that's a, I, I, as, as soon as you say that it's your signature move i'm gonna i'm gonna take i'm gonna take a business meeting in worcester massachusetts i want someone to pitch me a business i'm gonna i could do business meetings at minor league hockey games I don't think hockey games are fucking awesome. Also, imagine this. You're sitting at the meeting. You're eating some lips and assholes. Yeah. And in the background, there's two people just punching the shit out of each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where does that happen at a meeting? And that's not happening enough at meetings. I will tell you, I just found that nothing smells worse than a minor league hockey player. Those guys are aggressive. As a Canadian kid, I can tell you, I have washed my hockey equipment. Because once you get to a certain point in your life, you you stop buying equipment. You're done growing. Yeah. And even as you get fatter with each year, you just you push it and squeeze it into the yeah. equipment. I think I've washed my adult hockey equipment once. Really? So wait. So I've never, I've never wearing, played hockey. Imagine putting on the same thing to work out every day 
for years and never washing it. And when you're done, stuff it in a bag under other shit Why that's been it, worn. Whatever. Wh- how, how have they not fixed this? There are companies in Canada that are like dry cleaners for hockey equipment. So you take your bag and they literally like give you the stuff back like on hooks. Like it's they dry clean your hockey chest. So is it what is it that smells the worst? Is it the gloves? The gloves are pretty awful. The gloves are pretty awful. Uh, the bag really becomes the it's ground zero. I mean, it re- there's zero because I wear like a pajama pant underneath my equipment. Yeah. All right. Some guys just wear underwear and like, you know, put on their shin pads and tape it up around whatever. I like to have a, a, a layer. I'm a layer, layer too. I'm a, yeah. I'm a tactile guy. I don't want that uh, strap on my bare skin. I'm a sensitive yeah. guy. Yeah. So I, I pajama pant up and then uh, those pajama pants, they go right back in the back. Imagine that and what's happening and, and not to whatever, but zero chance that there's not shit growing, that if you well, got yeah. a microscope out, you'd be like, they're learning languages. Like these, yeah. Oh, yeah. these bacterias have evolved to a point where they've got a little city. Wait, why? I, I mean, that you'd think that would be a breeding ground for MRSA and like all the, all the flesh-eating bacteria. That's why I can't, no Canadians ever get sick. It's because our, we're gear. just, yeah, we, 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 those bacteria get in us early and uh, that's it. I put on catcher's equipment, never smelled, but mm. I bet if I smelled it now, I would, it never smelled to me. Hockey, you think it, it's cold. So you're like, ah, oh, you know, you're sweating like crazy under there. Oh, yeah. Right? I wish I'd played hockey. I said this to two, two people the other day. Have you been? Can you skate? Uh, I, I can roller skate really well, but I can't. But roller I, blade or roller, roller skate? Roller skate. I, I never grew up. We didn't have ice in right. Florida. Also, like, what happened to rollerblades? Uh, Why are they not still awesome? They're, I, I, I mean, it's, I think it's a Bill Burr joke, but it's a branding issue. One, They were cool for a summer. Right. And then a couple of gay guys wore them. And then they're like, oh, yes, we can't use. He, he's, he said this. I mean, he's, this is Bill's premise. He said to me. Right. He said the same thing happened with fucking conversion vans. No, I mean, a couple of kids get molested in them, and all of a sudden, no one can have a fucking conversion van. That one's a bad, that one I actually kind of get. But the rollerblades, uh, I never got why those disappeared. I bought a pair of rollerblades because I figured I would like it in college. Right. And I just could not do it. I didn't. But you can roller skate. I could roller skate really well, but it's four wheels. So right. it's, it was very stable. And I never grew up, even when I, I, I can pick up ice skating pretty quickly. Yeah. But at this age, there's a nervousness to it that I wouldn't have had as a kid. Right. That I was like, like, um, but I was a really great it's skater. It's weird. Well, and I, are I, you referring to the fact that one day you wake up and you're like, I'm scared to fall. Like, if I fell on skates, I'm worried about what would happen to me physically. Well, I know for a fact that I am not a guy who won't wear a helmet anymore. Like, I wear a helmet to do everything. See, I haven't downhill skied in a lot of years. And when I, the last time I did, helmets were like, if somebody was wearing it, everybody was making fun of them. Just like, you know, yeah. nice helmet, buddy. Now I understand it's a, it's a must. You see a guy not wearing a helmet and you think to them, like, what, what didn't you hear about Sonny right. Bono or, or the Kennedy? Like, that's all. Those guys sold helmets yeah. for everyone. That's me. I got my AirPods in and I'm just bombing. I won't wear AirPods and- snowboarding. You won't do it. I won't do it because I want to hear everyone around me. Will you single up? Give the best uh-uh. of both worlds? Uh-uh. uh-uh. What are you talking about? I a won't. little credence? A little uh-uh. no? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Isn't that crazy? I also won't wear a backpack. Uh I I'm am picturing you right now just Well, also, let me be Bam. fair. Let me be fair. Just I down. mostly ski with my daughters. Right. So like and there's it's a different like it's a different skiing when I'm with my girls. Yeah. Because I'm mostly kind of staying behind them on a snowboard making sure people don't hit them and so i'm kind of like tracking them a little right. bit Dad and moves. then isla and i will cut loose and take off georgia and leanne are a little slower than isla and i and but it's my whole time it's like almost fucking trying to protect isla from herself right because she's a fucking lunatic father of two girls i am a new father to a seven-month-old little lady uh whose middle name is georgia no yeah man uh, first name Wolfie. Any tips? Talk to me about being a dad to a little lady. Uh, 
I'll t- I can only tell you my fuck ups. I can learn from those. The number one thing is, uh, you know, I, I hear Jordan Peterson has this like thing about uh, you're only a father for four years or what I, I'm not. There's I that audio thing right now online. It's, it's not, like it's not accurate. You were a father for much longer. Than I watched years. one of those and now the algorithm thinks I'm obsessed with that fucking Jordan, sound clip. I, I wish I could do a Jordan Peterson voice, but he's like, he's like, you're only a father for four years. <laughs> And it's it's four years they go by quickly. You've got it. Don't stop. You're nailing it. Well, let me put a caveat to that. You're a father for fucking ever. You'll always be a father. These memories that you're making tomorrow. If you unzipped yourself right now and Jordan emerged from uh, your body, I'd I'd be like, that makes sense. I'm a fan of Jordan Peterson. I'm not shitting on him. But like sometimes... He's gotten to this place where he is a prophet now. Right. For, he's a prophet for marginalized men. <laughs> so, like, so like, and I, by the way, I love Jordan Peterson. I think he's awesome. I fucking watch him fucking smoke chicks on 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 panel shows, and I'm like, kill it, Jordan. Right. But like, he needs to pump the brakes a tad bit on uh on his prophecies. Right. Because as it a dad, keeps going. as a dad, I'm fucking parenting today. Right. And I'm not not making memories with my daughters. I don't know what his premise is about the four year thing. Right. But what he what he is lacking to say in that clip is uh the investments you make in that child's life in those formative years, yeah, those are investments into a into a bank that they'll be withdrawing for the for the rest of their lives. So the more you the more time you don't go and work, which I did go and work all the time. I went and worked every chance I had because I didn't really have an option. But and and there's a lot of dads out there that don't have the option. Yeah. That's the other part that really fucking bothers me about hearing fucking people talk about parenting is like there are dudes in the military that are shipping out tomorrow that won't see their kid for a full fucking year. Yeah. Don't like so I got told by someone one time, he's like, Don't you think it's irresponsible that you had a child, but yet you're on the road all the time? It was a it was a real person. That's a real comic. That not yeah. a, I mean he's not a real comic, but yeah. he was at one point a real comic. It's more like a host. Right. He told that to me, and I was like, I was like, in my head, I was like, what fucking privilege, or what privilege do you live in where you get to go? I guess I'll have kids when my billionaire wife right. and I, like, I remember being floored by that statement, going yeah. like, like regular people have kids. Not everyone's rich. Yeah. Not everyone lives in Hollywood and can spend a million dollars on their dressing room to redesign their dressing room and it not like i remember it just being yeah. thinking to myself that was out of touch that those statements are out of touch those investments that you put into a child that that's the bank they withdraw from in high school and 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 in college and when they go to make poor life decisions those investments early on that's that bank they draw from I you seem like you have such a great relationship with them. You get nope, you know? I do not. I do no. not. I actually do not. That, that, I love them small. more than anyone will ever love them. And I and I try my best to show that, but sometimes that rears its head in the boyfriend you didn't like being before. So, like one of the things I um, did I say that I don't know if I've said this. I don't know if I've said this, but I'll say it now. Yeah. I I must have said this, but like uh the other day uh i texted i was getting coffees i like to get coffees for the girls in the morning yeah i texted georgia and isla i I called georgia and i said i woke her up and i i didn't know she wasn't at home right and i went on life 360 and i saw where she was and i didn't recognize it it didn't look like where she said she was going to be and within a matter of seconds i became the guy that got cheated on right the guy that got lied to by women right now, i didn't marry that chick i married the chick that let you know where you stood because i would i didn't want to date those chicks right but but that guy that's broken that's that guy's not gone <laughs> he's still really here he's and in the bomb shelter i said to my wife when i walked in the house like fucking six in the morning I, the words came out she's cheating on us wow and my wife went whoa wow and i and i didn't even know i said it like yeah. like today on radio i said that a guy <coughs> though it was supposed to be 450 yards and someone's like 450 fucking yards and i was like no i said feet and they were like you said yards i came out i didn't know i said it and right. the man goes hold on 
Hang on one second. Right. Did you mean she's lying to us? And I was like, that's what I just said. She's like, that's not what you said. Yeah. And I went, oh. And then Georgia came home and she was very clear about where she was and it was everything made sense everything tracked yeah i just wasn't i was i was spinning out of control that's my one thing i will say is if you know there's the 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 hurt dude inside you do as much therapy as you can to help make sure that you that doesn't rear its head with your kids because that's the one thing that i know for a fact that in parenting a high schooler a teenager that a lot like I mean, Georgia made one mistake one time over quarantine, where you know, fucking typical high school kid mistake. Right, high school fuck up kid mistake, and I, I lost it. I, I went, I got, I went to here, and I, and I didn't really. I thought this was where you should be in parenting. Someone fucks up, you go to here. That's how I was parented. Right, they need to know they fucked up. What I didn't realize is I've now have created a, a paradigm within which if she. If she is gonna fuck up, she knows I go to here, so she might as well lie so that I do, she doesn't get caught because she doesn't want to go to here. And she also knows even if she lies, it's going to here anyway. So here's the fucking end game. Right? Why the fuck? Why not play all the cards you got? Right? Because it's gonna be here anyways. And then it took me some therapy and some and some just learning, like learning to go to do the count to ten thing and go right. I'm not. She's alive. She's safe. She's home. What am I going to do about this? I need to get her to trust that she can be honest. Right. And and so like there's I mean there's so much to parenting that's when I hear that you only got 4 years. I'm like no man, it's not 4 <laughs> fucking years. It's not I mean, maybe it is that's how you raised your kids, but like Right. It's it's forever and right now is the fucking funnest. Yeah. The, the what you're gonna see is what's crazy and where i fucked up is i'd go on the road for travel channel it was two weeks on one week off and on that one week off i do stand up right because they change so much it's in wild. two weeks yeah they change so much in 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 i remember i went to south africa for a month to do a tour and i came back and georgia was reading like had a book out and was like look not reading but looking at a book and i came downstairs and i remember she said hey what the fuck are you doing here and i went <laughs> She was like fucking, she was maybe four. Right. And I was like, when did it, you start yeah. cursing? I mean, there's nights where I wake up in the morning and it's like shit changed in while you were sleeping. Yeah. It's like, did somebody uh, raising Arizona, our kid in the middle of the night, uh, like you look different. You, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's super cool. You're going to have so much fun then. Yeah. It's yeah, so it's, much fun. It's already unbelievable. And it's, um, and how old is she right now? She's seven months yeah that's and that they're almost she's almost a human yeah and it's and it's <laughs> when they all become humans things, it's like i have a video on my phone of of the first time she rolled over karen and i were both there and we we were like we saw it happen and it's this video and i'm like it's january 12th she just rolled over and we're like <laughs> hugging each other and, uh, and granted we've also been locked in the house for a few years and we're probably like a little bananas but uh those moments are just like everything you hear about and everything that people tell you the walking my oh. favorite moments were um, I introduced Georgia to chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. And uh, oh, new food is so oh, exciting. Dude. Yeah. As, especially as a guy who's had a lot of food experiences. Yeah. That's the coolest is when you like, when you're like, try ice cream or try pizza or all oh. those like first little tastes. Oh, it's so cool. We used to go to Ralph's on, on West third in La Brea and they would, La Brea Bakery would come with bread yeah. at at the, at like in the mornings and at the at night like around dinner time they'd have fresh bread. My weakness. Oof, we bread. would we would rip off the top of the bread. Yeah. And we would get butter and just Georgia would just shove her hand in the bread and it would be warm. Yeah. Those there's, there's so many great great memories of having kids and it sucks. I don't want them to go to college. I don't want them to grow up. Yeah. But there's a coolness about it of like of uh like I, i'm glad i was a broke dad I was, i'm glad i was a poor dad that was a cool life experience because you you do get there are like old dads out there like i called one of my buddies an old dad one time and he fucking melted down right and he fucking threw a bowl of cereal at me <laughs> i was like i'm old, not an old fucking dad bro. <laughs> old dad in, in what sense like in just it, it was a buddy we talked about this on our podcast one time and uh 
he had uh <laughs> it you know it's it like uh every 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 parent tries the same shit we're all right everyone does the same shit yeah we're we all just all people stumbling at, one and pe- at one point we're gonna teach our kid a new language right we, oh my, <laughs> my kid's gonna be fucking trilingual right we all did it we all did it we yeah. all thought we were gonna teach them fucking sign language yeah we all did it and i and I, my, my buddy and i got in a car and uh his his he had french in the car and he was like yeah you know we're teaching the baby uh french right. and i started laughing and he goes what it's fucking funny about that and i was like i go we all did that and right. he was like huh i was like we all did that i go you're just an old dad and it, it fucking bothered him <laughs> it bothered him because he was like he was like i'm not some fucking old dad and i go no we all you think you're doing it right you, you're doing it you're also my age right and right. you're doing it and so you think you're doing something brand new i'm letting you know when I was poor and stupid, I also did this. Right. There's no difference. We all want our, the best for our kids. Carrie said something amazing, and I think my wife, she said this great thing the other day, and she was like, you know, it's so funny. Every parent, like, has that moment where it's like, oh, like my kid's a genius, like, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she was like, but the truth is, everybody's right. Because look at what these kids, like these little babies are doing. You're damn right you think your kid's a genius. Yeah. Like, that they can now pick up a pacifier and rotate it to put it back in their mouth, whatever. You understand what the hell's happening inside there to make all those things like oh, fire off? Yeah. Uh, so there's no question. It's like as a parent, when you see those little things, how you feel like, wow, we've got a special one here. Like, well, it's We all feel like that. And then I think one of the things, my parents did this very well was to be very acutely aware that I was no more special than anyone else and to let me know that like that specialness. So like, it's like, and that was really good about George and I love that I was hyper aware that I, they weren't going to pull the wool over my eyes. No one was pulling the wool over my eyes. If a parent said Georgia did something, right. She probably fucking did it. Right. And, and so like, and the same with Isla, like, Isla was just, Isla was, I mean, I mean this lovingly, but Isla was just too dumb to get away with anything. Like she fucking I can flushed, relate. I she can flushed relate her sock in the toilet to see what would happen one time in kindergarten and ruined the plumbing, ruined the plumbing. Right. And literally told a principal with one sock, one shoe, and one shoe that it wasn't her. And we were like, good God. Georgia would just slicker. She was a lot slicker. You wouldn't catch her doing the thing. Right. And uh, I thought it was really just a, a, also ahead of the curve because I feel like in today's world, uh, it's kind of you know you just say I didn't do it, and they're like, but look, yeah, we have a video of you doing. There's it. There's a video of you, and doing you go, it. yeah, but I didn't do it. Yes. Okay. I'll tell you the one thing I'm <laughs> jealous of my friends, and I, I say my friends, but I, everyone knows who my friends are. I'm just not going to say them because the, you know I don't I don't yeah wanna, you've got so many I don't name you got them, so many like, friends. Uh, you can't sit here and list. The I'll, I'll say I, I got three I got three friends. Who are who are older fathers? Old, right. I, I call them old dads. I don't right. say that now because it upsets them. Right. But and the one thing that they not did, young dads, not young. Right. Segura is the young. Well, I the same one, but Segura is the youngest of them. But um, the, first the time one that thing that's ever been said. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that they all have three done is they put they put their children before their career. Right. The three of them did, yeah. and and uh, I should name them because it's it's a good thing, but. Bill, Joe, and Tom have all put their children before their career, which is something I very, very, very much wish I could have done. Yeah, because they it's are they are very, the they're moment. very they're very present dads. They're very active dads. They're very involved dads. They are uh, if there's something going on, shut down no phone calls, dads. Like fucking, literally, family comes first, dads. Yeah, and and which I genuinely and probably i would say jealous of because i didn't have that luxury but i'm not i'm not saying like oh woe is me i just was like i was like hey man if I, I remember trying to read a book georgia going like so who the fuck's paying bills if i'm reading books like yeah. what if i'm reading books we're burning daylight here listen man it is uh there's a billion ways to get from a to b and in their own unique individual ways they're all bumpy wild rides and there's pros and cons and highs and lows and no matter how sweet you think it is on the other side of the fence uh, everyone's got their shit. You know, it's like, I can't wait for Carnival Eats to fire up again and to get back out there. But every time I think that, it immediately is followed with the thought of, I got to leave Wolfie. 
It's it's tough. Man. I got to do another full season. That's going to be thirteen episodes. That's five days. I think. Da da da. You start running the numbers. That's like three. If you add up all those days, that's almost three months of her life. But you know what? You know what Gafkin did. You know what I I I really wish I'd done more of is you guys are in a unique opportunity where you can pack the family up and tour. Yeah, pack the family up and go. Or or and you're definitely in a position now where you can kind of dictate your schedule a little bit and say yeah i love that I, i'm totally in but as the host of one of the most successful shows on the fucking network um let's let's find a way that works for everyone yeah because everyone wants that i was never in that position so when they were like hey man we just signed you on for 13 more episodes i was like cool i didn't want to rock the boat right. i wish i had right and i know i know for a fact i know for a fact that th those three dudes i mentioned would definitely rock the, yeah rock the boat at this point in their career, they probably would have done it when they were younger. I mean, I, I think they're just different men than I was. Yeah. But, but I was, man, it was like, you'll never know the feeling, luckily, what it's like to be a poor dad at Christmas going into, fuck, I talked about this so much, but going into Toys R Us and seeing other parents load up a cart. Yeah. And then having a very practical wife going, we can't afford that. Yeah. And, I, and then being like, like, fuck it just open and get another credit card who gives a fuck like right. i'm not gonna be the dad that i remember getting into fights if you bring this up with leanne yeah i mean this is like a real a genuine sore subject with us getting into fights with her that i started because we bought all our christmas stuff and set it up under the tree yeah and it didn't look impressive and, and by the way by impressive i mean it looked like four fucking gifts and i was like and, oh, I mean, and you me, imagine the whole spread. Well, you, all don't, the you don't realize you're fucking poor until you see that. And then you're like, and I'm, by the way, poor, I, we, we live in an apartment, but we live in an apartment because Liam was running the apartment. I, I wasn't, I was making a lot of money. I was featuring and, 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 and headlining when I could. Yeah. And I do the odd hosting job. But I remember legit getting into fights with her. And then I remember legit her driving to Rite Aid and buying tchotchke shit just to fucking fill, fill it, it out and then you know your kids fall in love with the tchotchke shit right. you're like why the fuck did we buy the thing what do we get this for they, they all they give a fuck about is the fucking singing m megaphone oh it's nuts yeah it's like uh we we got these beautiful baby toys delivered the other day and there was an empty box of like from perrier cans sitting on the counter and she's just like <laughs> just get this shit out of my way so i can hold that cardboard box it was like, yeah. I really wish you had told me that before I dropped a hundred bucks on this rattle. We would, that you, uh, dude, a box can go a long way. A box. And I think maybe that. They, and they're so small, you don't need uh, big boxes. It's not got to buy a washing machine. Yeah. You know? I mean, when you go to like Sugar's house, they don't have fancy toys. They don't have any fancy toys. Their kids play with my fucking suitcases. He lives in a giant box system house, basically. <laughs> yeah. It's just I mean, hundreds of boxes. Are you, do, you, do you think you guys will have any more kids? Uh, in a good way? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, I just, I, I have always approached going into being a parent, I think, with a very different outlook than most people. I've been very realistic in the sense of, I can't stand the posts on social media. Like my, the brightest part of my life. Yeah. And I don't, I didn't know what living was until whatever. Bullshit. You're tired. You miss moments of being able to just go see a movie. You're exhausted. You wish you had more help. Like there is a, a reality to raising kids that I think a lot of people are scared to talk about because they're worried that people are going to be like, well, it doesn't sound like you're a very loving parent or you're yeah. very excited about this. So everybody takes the approach of how's it going? <gasps> it's amazing. Yeah. She's so wonderful. How about it's hard as fuck. She's amazing. We're having the time of our life. But yeah, last night, I think she's got a tooth coming in and she basically screamed in my face for two hours. Yeah. Uh, I had a moment where I was like, how long could I hold my head under the water? <laughs> like, uh, you, like yeah. there's the reality of the, of the, of the grind of it. That is, it can be both. It, so I think I went into be. being a parent as just like, conscious and and realistic of that this is going to be a, a a tough thing i've got a life right now where carrie and i are 
traveling, eating at rest- restaurants, out and about. I'm filming shows. Yeah. We're rocking and rolling. You know, everybody's like, do I want to lose my life to like whatever? But most people don't have that life they think they're going to lose. We had this like amazing thing where we were like, yeah. you know, uh, I love it. I don't regret any of it. None of that. But I'm ready after her to uh, get back to traveling and and obviously with her as well. But uh, I started later. You know, I'm 44. Yeah. Uh, I already need to put my fucking hand on my other leg to get up off the ground. You know what I mean? If I'm, if, if if I'm on a carpet and there's nothing around me to like grab onto, to stand up with, I could roll to the next room. <laughs> like it's, uh, I'm old man. It's, no, this 40, body is stiff. I don't 40, think I could do it again. Tom, well, Tom was 40 when he started having kids, I think. Yeah. And Joe was probably at that age. I yeah, that, I mean, but that's, but that's, uh, dude, that's, it's, it's so much nicer because you can, I mean, I look at to be very candid, you can also get help. I mean, nannies, no question. We, but we had, we had, an, we had nanny, we had nannies, uh, we had a series of nannies that were all friends with each other. So we went from one to the next, to the next, to the next. And then the last one was a fucking train wreck. And right. end, like, fucking the by far the hottest one we ever had. No offense to my first three nannies, but the fucking without a doubt, I mean, supermodel hot, right? But like just call up and be like i'm not coming in today and leanne's like that's not how this works in hindsight it's like we should, probably should have looked at her resume as it turns out she's just modeled she just was a model <laughs> she, she just she's never held the a baby. first three we had because because i was on the road so like leanne on wednesday thursday friday and then part of monday or no probably thursday friday and monday they would work and because leanne because i wasn't there right and so but monday was my favorite especially like uh especially because now I, I wish they would hear this because they they know how much fun we had is i'd come home monday morning maybe they're monday because i'd fly in monday morning and then uh i'd pass out because i'd you know i'd been flying all fucking day monday i'd all we get up at you know fucking six in the morning they get that flight in right fly and then uh and towards the end it was all of them but uh monday night football we'd watch Monday. so leanne didn't get off work till five monday in our like right. football starts at 5 30 so right. we'd start making dinner so me and uh, either uh, annette or nikki or uh chloe we would go and that was our three nannies right we would go and uh like they were each at different times but then towards the end it was all three of them because they're all friends right so they'd come over monday and then it would be the three of us and we'd go and i knew them all well and the girls loved them right we'd go to ralph's and we'd get fucking groceries and we'd come and start making di- dinner together we'd open a bottle of wine we'd just be bullshitting and we, by the way, we're running triple defense on, like towards the end of their nannies. Right. Triple defense. So uh, girls are playing with each guy. And by the way, the other ones aren't even getting paid. They're just coming over to hang out. Right. Because Monday Night Football was so much fun. And then Leanne would come in. Our, our our maintenance man would come in. He'd hang out. And then Leanne would come in and be like, I just got done work. I want to go to fucking rest. I want to rest. Right. And we're like, oh, we're partying. You guys watch the girls. I mean, right. it was fucking, those were like the fun. Those are the things, man. The yeah. fucking funnest of this part of this kid journey of yours yeah is gonna be the fucking the when you look back and you go god damn it that was fun yeah and they're funny as shit oh yeah man i mean she she i'm not being cheesy but really there's a, a, a moment every day where i'm just like i'm feeling feelings that i've never felt i'm smiling harder than i've ever smiled you know, to to make her giggle and get that good baby laugh when you just like nuzzle and kiss her and whatever oh. It's like, it's medicine, man. It's really, I get it. I and get not it. all kids are good. No, <laughs> no, but we're spoiled rotten. We got, we got like a really beautiful, well, when I say that, I mean, she's, she's beautiful, but she's like, I always refer to her as a ray of sunshine. This kid is like, just smiles, is happy. Right now, right now, you know what there I mean? is, right now there is a, a mom with a kid screaming, yeah. listening to this, going, I fucking yeah. wish I could get my ray to shine. I know. I know. <laughs> and I feel bad, you know, because like those early months where parents who have kids who in a weird, sick way want you to be having a tough time. And they're like, so how you doing? Yeah. Getting any sleep? <laughs> and we're like, yeah, we're great. Uh, Carrie and I have been rotating nights. So every other night I sleep eight to 10 hours and we're feeling great. She's wonderful. And they're just like, 
well, you wait. <laughs> you, you, the next stage is really, and it's like, yeah. you want this to be a, a hard time for us, but we're, we're, we're spoiled, man. She's How long wonderful. have we been going, Halston? Two days. Oh, we should probably wrap this up. Two days. The, uh, um, so what, what are you in town for? You just come to hang out? Uh, a little mental health. Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, like everybody been cooped up inside and, and with the little one and the holidays, we were home a ton and just ready to like get out and about, uh, also visiting a couple of friends, seeing some people. I'm but for so the most glad part, you hit me up. Oh dude. And I'm so glad that it, it, uh, it got to happen because there was a moment where I was like, if we're going to get to sit down, finally, I want to be in person. Oh, yes, uh, yes. you know, shout out to the way you uh, pivoted and, and, and worked through that kind of COVID run. But uh, I was just like, when we do this, I want to be here. I'm you know? so glad yeah. this happened. I, you, you're my big white whale. I've, there's like a few people, and everyone knows this. Like Casey Neistat was a big one for me. Rob Deerdack's a big one for me. Nice. Of like people that I'm just fans of that yeah. I could, that I don't even need to like, I just could talk to forever. And you're, and what's so man. great about you, and, and I think that we come from that same hosting muscle where when we want to make sure the conversation moves forward yeah so it's like i so i'm so glad you did this man and my pleasure. congratulations on wolfie thank you congratulations on everything thank you and same to you brother i feel again we we talked about this at the very beginning i feel like our careers were both kind of taking this next big step when we virtually met yeah. and i've enjoyed watching your ride and oh. the joy that you bring people uh you know the instagram the whole thing i love following along and seeing all your wacky adventures and also what's his name when he dyed his hair that was purple it looked awful john man yeah jeez it does geez. look it looks really purple yeah that was it's like, gonna Jesus. look really bad because he's he's in mexico right now oh. and he's coming back and he's been in the sun for a week oh it's gonna be fucking it's gonna horrendous get, yeah it's gonna be a weird color he had a beautiful salt and pepper thing going he on did there. have a beautiful salt yeah, and pepper. You, you destroyed that guy's whole <laughs> we thought life. we made it so black at <laughs> one point <laughs> i mean if he's listening i'm so so sorry he looked like jojo rabbit when we got done with him. i mean I don't know if there's something he looked like. That was a first. Always a pleasure. Well, brother. thank you for doing this, brother. This yeah. is great. Yeah. So good.